Hello, everyone. Welcome <laughs> from uh, the lodge. I uh, have a very special guest here. Say, say hello, Carl. Hello, Carl. Um, and we've been uh, well. We've been drinking for some hours. Yeah, it's been quite romantic, hasn't it? We, I, 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 you came bearing gifts. I, you, I, I tell you what. When future um, historians write up tonight, they're going to be like, "This was definitely a gay romance." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you get. I mean. <laughs> Carl, get, Carl, okay, I, I picked Carl up. We got to the lodge and he, mm. well, first of all, we had lunch, didn't we? Yep. We went to a lovely old country Oh, pub. it was good pie as well. We had, we had some clandom pie. Very good. And then uh, you got me four Davidoff cigars, which are the bee's knees. I think so. They certainly cost the earth. So yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, and, it's, and... it's because at the, at the last sh sh uh, Shielding's event, I was just pinching your cigars all evening. So I and felt then, like I should repay the favor. Uh, I noticed though we smoked four of my. But no, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's because uh, it's because of your, those Davidoffs need to be re resuscitated in the in the humidor. So I'm no expert. So I'm we've sure. had uh, we've had two of my Epicure twos, mm. um, but also you gave me Carl a little um, a little match. Yeah, that. Strikes on its own. It's like a self-lighting match. Yeah, and then it, well, it's not a self-lighting match because you have to light it. Um, but the, basically, on my Facebook feed, uh, it kept coming up with this um, uh, matchless match where you fill it with life fluid, but it's like a match you score down it. And I thought, oh, that, that's nice. And it was only like twenty quid, and so I thought, oh, I'll get AA that for Christmas. Won't that be nice? And in exchange, he cooked me a nice uh, bolognese. So yeah, it's been very romantic, really. Yeah, Not I mean, <laughs> the uh, the match has got my name engraved on it, which is a lovely touch. Well, it was a free uh, a free service they did. They're like, do you want your name engraved on it? I may as well. And then, just you in case also, you lose it and someone else has one, just you also it. bought flavored liqueurs. So we've, yeah. I've, I've got a salted caramel one here. You've got a yeah. raspberry one. Yeah, they're good. I got them from Blenheim Palace. So, they're saving them just for the occasion. I mean, we have kind of been drinking on and off since lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what we're going to talk. We've kind of already talked about, we cannot discuss some of the topics that we were discussing <laughs> earlier on, Carl, because we're on YouTube now. And yeah. uh, what's it, Neil Mohan, Mo Mohan, uh, under the the new Rishi Sunak of YouTube. Uh, yes. Uh, so, well, we don't know what he's going to be like, but let's be fair, it's just not worth it. So, yeah. but I think what people <laughs> really want to know is, that spaghetti bolognese I made using the pork and the mince and the wine and my, you know, special mm. beef stock. What, yeah. what do you reckon? Yeah. Uh, with with a bit of uh, proper British cheddar cheese on it, it was very good. I offered him Parmesan and yeah, he was like, no, I want cheddar. I, I, I'm calling out Furious Pertinax right now. There's no such thing as an Italian cheese. Stop bragging about Italian cheese. <laughs> what there are is Italian toenail clippings and like weird gummy froth. There's no, there is no Italian cheese. He was like, I'm not having, I'm not having foreign cheese. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's because the Italians have never made a cheese. So, uh, to be honest, I quite like this cheddar on it, though. You kind of because it's me good. Because, uh, so, uh, yeah, you went in a whole diatribe about how cheese isn't proper, like Italian cheese isn't isn't proper cheese. No, it's not. Uh, it's got no texture. It's got no proper taste. Well, so Everyone's like, oh, look at that, Gorgonzola. Yeah, the foot cheese. Great. They gave you some books. You know, I mean, you spent a lot of money, so, oh, you know. It is. Uh, I mean, thank you. you know, uh, I thought, well, a couple of books is not <laughs> It's not terrible. You know. A couple of books about subjects unmentionable. One of them was by <laughs> Hilaire Belloc. I'll just say that. Hilaire Belloc is a bass writer. I bet he is. Uh, he's got a great book on the Crusades. 
Yeah. And that book I gave you, so, you know. <laughs> so the, the best book about the Crusades I've read was Harold Lamb. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. Really good. He's just such a poetic writer that he just takes you through the events, and it's like reading a movie, you know? Yeah. What else? Carl Sorry. has a plan, trust Oh, fucking, I wish. I'd have some hope then. If I was like, oh, trust the plan, lads, I would, I would be not as despairing as I am. What else? Uh, <laughs> we talked about Robin Hood, talked yep. about Shakespeare. Yeah. yeah. We talked about uh, <clears throat> Roald Dahl for a good bit, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, chat. Who did read Roald Dahl? Oh, in fact, no, quicker, who didn't read Roald Dahl? You know, just say uh -huh. if you didn't read Roald Dahl when you were a kid. Because it's just, this is, like, I, we were talking earlier, it's like, the, the backlash has actually been quite universal to the woke rewrite of Roald Dahl. Even James O'Brien, you said. Yeah, I'll cover it on the podcast tomorrow with the clips so everyone can see. But even James O'Brien was like, well, I mean, this this is too far, isn't it? It's like, oh, you, you prick. You set this up, you piece of shit. Oh, yeah. I hate James O'Brien so yeah, much. Yeah, me too, uh, me too. Last we talk about, Robin Hood, lots of Shakespeare stuff. Uh, but people that we read Dahl in school, like, dude, I read Dahl in my free time because it was fun. It was I, good. I, I, I read some of them over <clears throat> and over. George, yeah, the Marvelous Twits. Medicine, Twits. Yeah, George. Yeah, that's another great one. George Marvelous Medicine. James and the Giant Peach was yeah. good. Yeah, and we were saying, weren't we, that um, a lot of the his villains are horrible women, which is based. <laughs> horrible women are a thing that yeah. you know, a misogynistic thing that he does. So. Uh, Yes. Well, remember so, Rick Mail on TV reading George's Marvelous Medicine. I bet that was great. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, sounds I, good. I really like Rick Mail. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I think taking on Roald Dahl was something. Yeah. There's a, they've also released this ridiculous, <clears throat> this ridiculous list that you're going to talk about um, yeah. on things that are far right, <laughs> which include the complete works of Shakespeare, <laughs> Chaucer, Beowulf, Lord of I the mean, Rings. Beowulf is pretty far right. Lord of the Rings, uh, what else Sharp, Sharp, Game of Thrones, um, not Game of Thrones, The House of Cards. Yep. I mean, you know, this is just like good, good stuff. Really. Yes, yeah. Prime Minister. That's, yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah yes, far Minister. Right. I mean, British show on Suicide Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the far right, British show. But uh, I don't know. I think they, I think they may have um, caused a run on Roald Dahl. Yeah, books. Because I said I was going to order that thing. For yeah, the birthday, yeah, do it now. Yeah, because I'm, I'm I, going to. my immediate reaction was, yeah. I have to buy these for for AAA basically yeah, before, yeah, yeah. before it's too late. But on the plus side, thank them for you know, thank you for reminding me that I need to get my son Roald Dahl books. Yeah, because I was probably about eight years old when I first started reading Roald Dahl. Yes, and I, you know, I hadn't thought about it in years. What's your favorite one? If you had to pick one, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you order it. I'll just uh, the the twins. You like the twit, the twits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the twits, the twins. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember reading that over and over because I was fascinated by the physiognomy analysis he gives. Mm -hmm. And looking back on it now, it's like, wow, that's surprisingly uh, informative. Actually, do, do you know? Do you remember um, uh, in the twits, Mister Twit has gets all like food stuck in his. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the things. Yeah, the, the grossness of them. When I grew my beard, I was acutely aware of that happening, of like the potential of that happening due to. Reading the yeah, Twitch yeah, when yeah, I was younger. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, here we go. Um, oh, no. Right, so the, I'm, I'm looking at the Prime one, so I want it for tomorrow. But they haven't, like, the, some of them is James and the Giants. It's, it's the one which is 16 books. 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just put in Roll Doll box set. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's not going to be here until March, but okay. That's no good. Danny, champion of the world. Yeah, the twits. The Hold witches. on, which is the, uh, let me let me show you. I bought one. Boy, on say that. Matilda. Oh, Matilda was really great as well. I'll show you the one I bought. Hold on. Uh, you can see the many thousands of pounds I've spent on Amazon. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, I'm personally responsible for buying Jeff Bezos. Yeah, this one. Look. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, no, is that I'm looking at the same one. I think that it's. Um, there's been a run. I think that, that's why. Look, yeah, yeah, I think it, so. there's been a run. Yeah, that's think, why it's delayed. I think. I think there has. But I'm. I'm happy to contribute to the run. To be honest, excellent. Um, because I. I agree that this is one of those things where it's like, no, 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 they can get fucked because this is genuinely Soviet. What they're doing. Oh, it's, it's awful. It's, it's, it really it's a is. genuinely sort of Soviet thing. It upset happened. me greatly when I saw. Yeah, that. I was. Yeah. I didn't even realize I'd be upset by it either. Like you know, it wasn't. 
But I don't spend any moment of my day thinking about Roald Dahl until they're like, yeah, so we're going to vandalize his stories. Like, okay, fuck off. I don't look. Uh, Roald Dahl. I don't know. Just what? remind myself of all his books. Hold on a minute. I tell you what, Rishi Sunak has joined the criticism. Yeah, yeah. BBC front page. This is not going to go down. No, they're going to. They're going to. Level of backlash. What is? I can't, okay, I'm too drunk to remember my password. I have, to, <laughs> I have to do it tomorrow. We'll get my computer. Out. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just can't fucking remember what the password is. All right, he's gone over there to do that. I'm, I'm just having a look at um, the uh, the list of Roald Dahl books because I want to try to think of, like, what's the best one? Okay, here are his novels. Okay, I've got them. Okay. I'll just have a look at uh, the chat a minute. Amazon is preventing me from adding it to my basket. Why is that? Okay. Literally, if I click <clears> add to <throat> cart, it's just like your cart's empty. Hang on, no, no, no. What? Why is my cart empty? <clears throat> I'm just finishing off this um, last of this salted caramel. I might get my I might get my whiskey out. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Hold on. Well, I've still got plenty of the other ones. What have you got? This the gin, right? The yeah, raspberry yeah, and, and the plum. The plum one. The plum. I might go for the plum. All right. Ooh. Yeah, let's do the plum. <laughs> right. Salted caramel. Was 16, nice okay, got it. Yeah, the salted caramel was particular. You've done it? You've ordered it? I, I have ordered it. And Fantastic. I, I'm genuinely passionate about this because I really did enjoy Roald Dahl's books. And like, my parents <sighs> never had to encourage me to read them or anything like that. I was genuinely yeah. interested to do so. <clears throat> okay, so I've just... Pulled up a list of the Roald Dahls. Yeah. I haven't read that. I don't know the Gremlins. That's obviously... No, I'm not of that one. Games and the Giant Peach. Yep. Ace. Yep. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, obviously. obviously. Yeah. Magic Finger. Um, don't remember that one. No, I don't remember that one. Fantastic Mr. Fox, yes. That's the one with the different, uh, like, the alcoholic farmers. You know, one of them drinks cider. And, oh, I can't remember now. Uh, well, I have read it. Yes. Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Danny the champion yeah. of the world. That's where they go uh, poaching. Yeah. I always remember the line in that, that his dad never smiled, but his eyes were warm. His eye, He had a smile in his eyes. Yeah. I always thought it was a cool line. Uh, but this, this is the thing about Roald Dahl. He had a really humanizing way of describing things that was exaggerated, but you kind of knew what he meant. Like Miss Trunchbull was a great yeah. example of this. Where it's like everyone knew that kind of really overbearing, like she obviously she didn't throw children over the school fence. No, but, but hyperbolically, you know, she, you know the sort of character. Yeah, yeah. She walks with her elbows. Yeah, you, and, you knew know, exactly yeah. the Miss Trunchbull when you saw her. Yeah, George Marvelous Medicine. <clears throat> yeah, BFG. Yeah, witches. Yeah. Matilda. Yeah, oh, they're all good, aren't they? The classics, absolute classics. Um, I was just mentioning earlier on when we talked about this earlier, but uh, Tales of the Expected is wicked as well. Yeah, um, I watched that when I was young. And um, he has these like creepy little intros to the front. Mm. Roald Dahl is based, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, just an excellent author. Where's where's his name from? What a strange name. I think he's Norwegian. I've got an idea that he's from Norway or something. Originally. Yeah. Let's have a look. British author. Yeah, but like, it's not a British name. Served in the RAF. Uh... We'll click on his click on his name at the top there. So oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's why. Uh, early life. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he, he grew up in Cardiff. To Norwegians. Norwe Norwegians. Right, there right, we go. Yeah. And the reason I said that is because yeah. um, in the witches, the grandma is from Norway, and I always thought well, that's right. curiously specific, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's you know it's obviously all semi autobiographical. Mm. Um, it's funny because uh, my arch, uh, I'm a good friend of arch, and he's Norwegian. He was like, "Yeah, well, in Norway, we kind of look at the English as mad Norwegians." I was like, "It's mm -hmm. mm, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Mm. We see you as bloodthirsty invaders who need to repel. <laughs> 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 Got yeah. long memories, you see. Yeah. Um. All right. So, well, we, we might as well take questions from the audience. Why not? Well, yeah, we, we haven't got any. We haven't got any plans. We're a bit sozzled. I mean, I'm getting yeah, aggressively yeah. drunker, but uh, oh, yeah. 
I'm, I'm doing just fine. So, <laughs> any any questions? Yeah, see if there's any questions here. It doesn't have to be super chat. You can just wait in the chat. No, it does have to be super chat. Oh, it does have to be super chat. Come on, okay. capitalism hurt. All right, capitalism <laughs> hurt. Right. I'm joking. What are you currently reading? Right, Ta Tasha, what's the lodge like? Um, it's very, very dissident. Uh, <laughs> if, 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 if I had to put one word to it, <laughs> it's political radical. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> You've been saying that all day. I mean, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> well, yes, I, I do own a, a, a private lodge in Surrey. My name's Vladimir Lenin, and I'm just on the run all the time, you know. Like, yeah, it, like, in every other era, every other political radical has had to flee the country to England, actually. And, uh, and you're like, yeah, I'm buying property. <laughs> It was a vivid day. We were sitting eating uh, salted <laughs> salted caramel goos, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plotting the downfall of the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I love the British government yeah. in all its ways. And yeah. the nation of I'm looking forward to uh, Keir Starmer, to be honest. Oh. Hamza Youssef, 2020. How many times do you reckon I've mentioned Tony Blair today? <laughs> Probably about half a dozen. Right, okay. Just independently. That's, that's not bad. There's, no, there's, no. there's been a lot in the conversation. Like, so Tony Blair. <laughs> so <I'm just> like, <laughs> say, it's more weird that you got a portrait on him on the wall, you know. <laughs> uh, it was a strange moment when I was trying to rationalize. I was like, Do you think he's got goodness good goodness in his heart ultimately? No, I think he's it? way too late for Tony Blair. It's like Gollum. <laughs> right? He's he's sniffed the ring of power and it's far too late for him. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh so the Starmer government. Uh, reckon, the oh. lodge is just a side shed and he's back up. No, no, no. It is actually far more magnificent than that. I, I am mildly envious of the lodge. It is very nice. It is very nice. Oh, you met my neighbour, didn't you? My, yeah, uh, he was nice. Uh, and noisy. Apparently, this is the one day of the year that he has to be really fucking noisy. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, let's have a look. You lads having Harry Potter marathon tonight? So I made my case earlier that Harry Potter is actually incredibly based. And am I wrong? You laid it out. It was actually really interesting that um, all of the directors are British in some way, right? Or yes. Uh, well, no. One one was uh, Chris Columbus, who's an American. He's from Pennsylvania. He's from, like, yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, 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 small yeah, town yeah. America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One was a Mexican, and then two Englishmen. So it's like that's a weird collection of directors. But also, like J.K. Rowling, like no, all the actors have to be British, so no foreigners. Okay, based. Yeah. Agree. And then, they're all white. <clears throat> Well, I haven't watched it, so I actually don't know. Um, but I just remember seeing... I, like, I've never seen a Harry Potter film. And I've Lana Watson's white. Harry yeah. Potter's white. Who's the ginger? But, it, but ginger me, Rupert no, no, Grint, uh, but the thing is, it wasn't like an incidental thing. Like, J.K. Rowling literally came out and said, we're only hiring British actors. Like, right. This is why they didn't have, like, um, um, Robin Williams in it and stuff like this. And they, they, Chris Columbus actually got his daughter to be in it, but she wasn't allowed to speak. So right. she couldn't have a speaking role. Uh, because, because she's American. Because she's American, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was like, wow, that's actually really based, JK. And then if you look at the, the world she's created, well, it's just the British imperial education system. It's like, you're not a fucking peasant. You have been born special to this aristocracy, and now you go to the special private school where you get invested with particular powers mm. that the muggles don't have, the, you know, the, the, yeah. the inferiors don't have. And it's like, this is the most hierarchical thing in the world. Like, mm. This is unbelievably anti-egalitarian. Mm. And so I just can't understand how all of these fucking like commies are like, oh, JK, I, I love Harry Potter. I just wish I went to Hogwarts. So, yeah, but you were born fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just genuinely an anti-egalitarian. Like, Interesting. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. Was, that, was, was Harry Potter on the list of far-right texts? Uh... You know, I didn't see it on there. All oh, right. Okay. It, but I've, I've never read it. I, at some point, I will read it. Uh... No, that, that, that's the thing, right? People in chat go, yeah, but Rowling's like woke. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying Rowling is based. What I'm saying is that she didn't realize what she had created. She was looking at the world around her and going, oh, this is a good world. I'm going to mimic it for this thing. And it mm -hmm. actually, that's, she's, you know, and what she's done is projected the the image of like classic, like British aesthetic into the minds of everyone. And they were like, yeah, I love this. And it's like, yeah, then stop being a fucking leftist. 
Mm-hmm. That's what it means, you know. She didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I, I'll just mention. Uh, uh, I'll just mention that Nick S. <clears throat> why did you block me on Twitter? I don't even post. You probably follow an undesirable. Because <laughs> I, I snowflakey well, is well. I did a chain block on anybody with an orange juice logo in there. How do you do a chain block? I've got methods. I've got means and ways. I, I did a chain block. Okay. So just let me know your, your screen name and I'll unblock you. Mm. A lot of people were caught up in collateral damage when I got... Uh, <laughs> um, okay, what else? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there, there are actual Super Chats now, but uh, right, we should probably reward them. Uh, mm. Coney says, did you know Carl Schmidt is very popular in Chinese academic circles? His work has been heavily cited and promoted by uh, Xi Jinping as also Yukio Mish- Mishima and Yoko Ono went to school together. So there we go. Um, I um, did come across a uh, Chinese scholarship on Schmidt when I was writing Populist Delusion. Um, I'm going to write a piece soon. I'm not going to do it tonight, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write a piece soon about how soon. Um, the, the, the wokesters have internalized Schmidt and Yes. Um, how I, I think that trying to tackle woke with on it because what they've said is that essentially everyone else is a cuck if they're not prepared to positively and negatively discriminate. So if you want to be an egalitarian, to be an active egalitarian, you have to be a black supremacist. Mm-hmm in order to defeat the white supremacy, as in the yes. inequality between blacks and whites. So they've got that corner. Right, can't yes. Um, that, that's why literally every liberal outlet, like, you know, Quillette, Unheard, all of these sort of, like, you know, center, centrist liberal things, they all just end up going woke over time. Mm-hmm. They can't help themselves. Well, what I'm saying is you'll never defeat... You'll never defeat woke with just like the last egalitarianism no you no, you're it's designed to, to overcome it you can't you have you know they've already deconstructed liberalism they've mm. already done all the stuff that we've done yeah. so in order to um and they did it while you guys were still in school yeah pretty much yeah so we're all playing catch up but also they kind of know like all that stuff i talk about in populist illusion mm. they know it oh yeah already oh yeah whether they whether they know it or not, they know it. You but what, know? What, what's most subversive about the critical race theorists is that they took the tools of liberalism and inverted them mm-hmm. without re- without changing the words. And so they have expanded the definition of any particular word to include its antonym. Mm-hmm. And so the liberal literally has no way of winning an argument against a wokist. It just can't happen now. So that dude, Nick S, never told me his Twitter name. Tell me your Twitter name, Nick S. I'll unblock you. Uh, okay, another another uh, super chat from Coney. Several more from Coney. Uh, Carl, how much would you say AA has transformed your political positions over time? What key intellectual figures do you now identify or connect with? Hold on, I'll deal with that. Um... It's kind of hard to say because I've been imbibing a lot of content from across the political spectrum for a long time. And really, it was my own studies that kind of led me out of liberalism because I had to spend a lot of time really going into the weeds from the original thinkers on liberalism. Mm-hmm. And this is why I ended up writing the five false assumptions of liberalism. Now, I've got another one in the works, five fo- more false assumptions, because it they're just not true. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're just false assumptions about the state of mankind or the state of human nature that just weren't accurate and never were. And a lot of them even admit, well, this may be just a thought experiment, but I'm going to run with it anyway. And so it it, it would it just wasn't it's just not tenable. And then when you see what has come out of the false assumptions, you're like, right, okay, it's actively destructive at its worst. Because I mean, like, if it was, if it was a bunch of Englishmen who had just arrived in North America, being like, oh, we need to follow liberal axioms, they'd probably be okay. Because they'd have a bunch of conservative assumptions 
that they wouldn't even question, that their right. civilization would have rested on, and that would have just gone along as normal. But that's not the case. And so it has to be ideologically taught and imposed on other people. But of course, that means they're going to challenge them, and the challenges are valid. And so, you know, so it's not any one person. It's it's more the sort of me trying to square it, you know. And it and but lo lots of people have influenced me. I mean, like I wouldn't have read Evola if you hadn't been the one going on. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually quite glad I did, because I like his view is of the 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 a lot of things actually. The transcendental mm -hmm. is quite good actually, mm -hmm. and very few because there is what what myself and Scott Mannion were working on a couple of years ago was essentially the sort of transcendental nature, the metaphysics of England. Mm -hmm. And Evola has a good way of describing the subject in mm -hmm. a way that other people don't have, you know? And so I'm, that, that was something I've really been enjoying. Uh, mm -hmm. It was you that turned me on to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Coney says, uh, there seems to be a disagreement in our circles on the nature of the British and American empires. Was woke a natural evolution of Victorian white man's burden or an external force of vengeance? It comes from America. Okay, well, I can I can tell you the exact genealogy of wokeism. It comes from the Frankfurt School, which moved to America, just stated in American in Harvard Law School, mm -hmm. and then became what we call critical race theory now. So no, this wasn't a product of the 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 only way you could tie this on the British Empire is the success of the British Empire. <clears throat> yeah. The fact that the British Empire ruled over non-white people would be the only way that you could say the British Empire is vaguely responsible for this, because that gives them an angle of attack. But the ideology itself is definitely not from the British Empire; it's definitely American. No, I agree, a hundred percent. I think it's um, and you yeah. can't you can't create critical race theory, theory without the American context as well, because it requires the blacks to have been slaves in the country in which they still reside. Yes, and let's just say. A certain intellectual context in America, in places like New York and elsewhere, that kind of facilitate uh, well, critical race theory. Frankfurt School, for example. Yes, know. but a lot of the critical race theorists are um, what they would say people of color. Yes, yes. So indeed, it's yes. it's it's uh, it, actually the critical race theorists have got a surprising cross section across racial boundaries. Actually. Mm -hmm. People like Kim Kimberly Crenshaw, for example, is the person who coined intersectionality, mm -hmm. and she. Is black and she is basing her activism on Gramsci, who is Albanian. So mm -hmm. it's just like, okay, what the fuck are you all doing? You yeah. know, and he, well, he was a, he was an, an, an Albanian, Albanian Ita immigrant to Italy, uh, Italy, yeah. Italy in Mussolini's prison. Yes, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's just, but it, it it can't be possible without the American context. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I think um, I think the attempt to tie critical race theory back to like English. Like British Empire ideology, essentially, no, it is misplaced. It's a different beast. Yeah. Um, what you could say is, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, like a different, uh, different cup. What, what, what you could say is, I guess, is um, I was trying to explain this on Twitter earlier. In the same way that you could say, well, in a, in a, in some way, Cecil Rhodes is responsible for Robert Mugabe, right? In so much as Robert Mugabe is a turning upside down of Cecil Rhodes, in the same way America, in the same way CRT is basically a turning upside down of British imperial ideology, in a, in a way. Yeah, but it's it's I I wouldn't connect the two. I don't see the connection between them, frankly. And that's not to say that British imperial ideology is good or bad or whatever. It's just I just don't think they're the the parent of it. What, what do you think about the idea that? See, I, I've got this idea that if if British ideology was guilty of anything, it was in actually at some point believing its own bullshit, yeah. i.e., becoming genuinely universalist, genuinely believing in education as a liberator. You know, the, the idea that, uh, for example, Gandhi would receive a you know a British education. In law, and then use it against the British Empire as being, in some way, a quote unquote success of the empire. Right? Um, that that to me is not yeah. woke ideology. Woke ideology doesn't. I don't think has that universal. It's particularist. It, <clears throat> it basically posits that white men are a unique well, it, evil it, in the world. It, it's not. That's contextual, though. 
um, because it is based on the eternal value of equality. And so what it's saying, it, woke ideology basically sees itself as a kind of game theory to get to equality, as in, in the moment, everything is controlled by white men, apparently. I mean, it's not, but like, mm -hmm. it, you know, in the last, say, 20 years, you could say, okay, well, yeah, it's mostly white men in charge of things, sure. But in another 20 years, it won't be mostly white men in charge of things. And so the Zoomers will be able to use woke ideology. And legitimately, because the people who would otherwise object will have to say, well, I mean, historically, maybe, but it's just not been the case in the sort of the generation alpha and the Zoomers. Mm -hmm. They won't remember a time where white people were in charge. Do you, do you think, do you think like the, the people who genuinely pedal CRT, right? Mm. Um, let's just pretend that they don't, sincere. don't know that they're in power and they're sincere. Okay. Do you really think that in their minds, it's a temporary thing? affirmative action for example you know oh we only need this for 10 years 20 years until this group or that group catches up or do you think that because I, I think basically over time it has transformed to become a genuinely kind of supremacist movement well, there's undoubtedly that there's a lot of people who are supremacists who use this um as a tool um mm -hmm. i think there are useful idiots who do think charitably speaking that like oh well no this is about just redressing historic wrongs and bringing you know marginalized groups into the center to help them get along there, there are definitely those useful idiots but um they don't drive the, the they don't steer the ship so mm -hmm. I, I do think it is racial supremacists who do steer the ship right yes no and i agree I, i'm not saying gandhi was woke i'm saying that gandhi is an example of yeah the British universalism actually living up to its name in a strange way. Well, they yeah. gave him an education. They well, well, gave him the tools to... But also, like, I, 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 was it Pete Hitchens who made this point? I can't remember who made this point, but it was like, look, Gandhi is only possible in the liberal British Empire, right? Because mm -hmm. in Nazi Germany, he would have just disappeared. In the Soviet Union, he would have just disappeared. Yes. It relied on the fact that we weren't tyrannical totalitarians for his peaceful protest to work. Because mm -hmm. if it was, a you know, in a I mean, European-run state, he would have just disappeared. I, I think the best thing you can say is, do you remember I made those videos about how um, libertarianism is the handmaiden of socialism? I remember I made those uh, arguments. I agree with them, yeah. um, you could say that British-style universal liberalism was a handmaiden in some way, i.e., it made the institutions weak against the woke attack because woke is not liberal. Woke is not truly. No, no. Woke, woke is liberal. That's the problem with it. They're, they're, go on, go on. They're, yeah. As in it, it, it grounds itself on liberal premises and the, the way that it managed to defeat the Americans so easily is by working within their own civil rights legislation. Mm -hmm. the, Kimberly Crenshaw was actually really clever about this. And now, in looking back at it in retrospect, it seems kind of inevitable, actually, that you have a uh, liberal human rights law, which is people shouldn't be oppressed for being black or being gay or being women or something. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, and everyone everyone kind of agrees, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then Kimberly Crenshaw said, yeah, but what if someone's suffering a kind of double oppression for being a black woman, for example? I'm mm -hmm. a black woman. I'm getting doubly oppressed. Trump. Yeah, it's yeah like, you, you, you want up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and that's what intersectionality is. Mm -hmm. And this kind of explodes liberal human rights law because it is designed to only recognize one category. And this allowed her to just essentially roll up all of it into everything now is intersectional work because I've got the Trump card mm -hmm. and I win. You know? So I, I, if we're being like super strict, civil rights law wasn't liberal because. It violated the key wow. liberal principle of the freedom of a, of association. But this this is the problem because there are two kinds of liberalism. There's English liberalism and French liberalism, and you're thinking of the English liberal yes order. Well, this is the argument though, but British the, but liberalism the, right of of negative rights. But yes, indeed. Yes, they the Americans got subverted. Who? Which one was it? Who brought in the big society? LBJ is it? LBJ. Yeah. That that uh, FDR, FDR, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the introduction of French liberalism to the American system, European right. liberalism yeah. of positive rights, and now that's and that's the end of the English liberal project. Actually, can't survive it. Mm -hmm. So, if you permit positive rights, and the English liberal project is doomed to die, it seems. So what we're so what we're saying is, even if we take that reading, hmm. 
it was the French liberalism and not the, uh, the British one that birthed CRT. Yeah, the Eng saying. English liberalism seems pretty stable, actually. Yes, indeed. Like, because it's negative. You can't force someone to do something, right? And so mm -hmm. that means you get the no Irish, no blacks, no dog signs. Mm -hmm. But that's not very progressive. Right, I see, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the problem is that English liberalism is weak to French liberalism because they agree that human rights are a thing. And actually, what English liberalism was is kind of the extrapolation of the rights of Englishmen, which is very particular. It's not universal. Mm. you know. And when you say, well, and the French were like, well, these are human rights. It's like, mm, See, the thing is, is that I, I've said this yeah. before. Locke, if he was sitting here now. Yeah, he wouldn't agree with any of this. Right. He'd be like, well, when I was talking about the rights of men, I wasn't even talking about white men. I was talking about like, if you read Locke, he assumes the people you're talking about have servants and like, he is not talking about it, it, like, it, when, he, when he's discussing the state of nature, he is talking about the, like in the state of nature, you don't have servants, right? So when he, 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 he is thinking, but the, the problem with Locke is he, he kind of feels that man is a rational actor in the state of nature. Right. And so he's got like the, he, he believes is a rational that reason in the state of nature requires man to be cooperative. Uh -huh. Sorry, I've had to study this at length, so I happen yeah. to know. Um, but like, and so he he wouldn't say it's for servants. But the problem is Locke fails to understand that it's his English bias that makes him think this way. But I I remember because I yeah you know, I can't remember which, in Defenders of Liberty I have a chapter on Locke. Mm. So I remember like going back to his original homesteading argument, mm. and he's like, oh. If you work the land or have a servant work your land, yep. then it belongs to you. But he he would say that this is the product of the uh, the cooperative nature of reason in and in, in the state of nature. Right, right. right, right so yeah. you could have a servant technically if you like enclose off a bunch of land and some guy yeah. came along and said, "Oh, I'll help you with the crops as long as you know you give me some of the crops." I mean, that's a cooperative, reasonable thing, right? Mm -hmm. So he's not he's not talking about like the uh, socially set hierarchy at that point. But of course, that's would. Give it, you can, know, can you kill the rumors, Carl? You're not sleeping in the same bed as me. You've got your own bedroom that I'm giving you. Do I? Are you for that? <laughs> First <laughs> time hearing of it. It's made love to me by my own, by my, my own mother a couple of days ago. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Grandma. <laughs> um, okay, what, what else? Uh, still, Coney. Uh, Coney's the only one on entropy. Everybody else is sending on normal. Uh, Tony says, have you heard the story of the recent history of the island of Sark in Guernsey? It's a fascinating tale of how two merchant elite brothers destroy the last vestiges of European feudalism. I think Andrew Doyle went on holiday here. He goes on holiday here every now and again because it's such a remote little island. I've got a mate who lives in Guernsey and I've seen Sark from afar. Oh, yeah. And he said there's only like 20 people who live there. Or something. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really small. So people like go there on like hikes and things like that. So. I bet the crime rate's really low. <laughs> the crime rate is like zero <laughs> exactly. in, uh, in Sark. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see. Let's see what I, we're not sleeping in the same bed. Uh, um, not tonight. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I'll uh, open other super chats. Um, sorry if we're conflicting with our nicer schedule, but you know, this doesn't happen every day, does it? So, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, um, I mean, MNDB says, this stream is amazing. You're amazing, are you? What about me? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> Lambda says, which song lyrics speak to you of this present moment? I submit hanging on in quiet desperation is the English way. I've recently discovered, rediscovered um, that every now and again, like a band from my childhood will either pop up on YouTube or I'll be suddenly inspired and then look them up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And Hey Man, Nice Shots by Filter came up the other day. Oh, it's a great song. Right, okay. It's yeah. a really great song. Hey Man, Great Shot, yeah. Hey Man, Nice Shot. It was, nice I, shot. I, I can't remember what it was about, but it's got some great lyrics in it. If you took them out of context, are very edgy. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Uh, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, um... I mean, I don't know. I'd have to think about which songs speak to me at the present moment. You know, I've been so. thinking about doing a kind of uh, retrospective on Green Day. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm not like... I, I, I always preferred Offspring to Green Day. Because when, 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 when we were kids, it's like, this was the big thing, Offspring of Green Day, right? I always preferred Offspring. But Green Day's been a really instructive lesson on, like, 
political radicalism. Because mm-hmm. if you look at them in the early stages, it like um, I can't remember what the name of the very first album is before they were famous, but it's just a bunch of teenage punks kids just mm-hmm. prattling around with their you know talking about like you know oh my mum's making me go to bed and stuff like that right mm-hmm. and then you've got um dookie which is about like being a listless teenager with nothing to do yeah and just smoking weed and wanking all day and then like they start reflecting on the emptiness of modern american life and like uh with uh american idiot mm-hmm. and they're, they're in there they've got the kind of They've got a kind of fork in the road. Are they going to be based or are they going to be cringe? And they ended up going woke cringe. Of course, yeah. But they could have gone based. Uh, okay. And now they're like literally revolutionaries who like sound like Rage Against the Machine. I would have to go with as my song that speaks to me. Yeah. I have to pick a more. I have to pick a Smith song. It's Morrissey's. Morrissey's based. Morrissey's based. Yeah. Um, it's this one. I decree is still ill by the Smiths. Yeah. I decree today that life is simply taking and not giving. England is mine. It owes me a living. Ask me why, and I'll spit in your eye. <laughs> I just love. That. I just love those lines. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I don't know. Like uh, we had a little moment earlier on. We were look, sitting looking at the Surrey Hills mm. in contemplation. That was kind of yeah, I, hands. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoyed that. It was it? a beautiful vista. It was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, some Comenium <laughs> says, uh, "Good evening, A and Carl." As fathers know this, as soon as your child is 17, they will want a car. As soon as they're 18, they will want to lift again. Be warned. Evola will not help you with this problem. Uh, well, you've got a solution to this problem that you were telling me about earlier on, about giving lifts. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I just didn't learn to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to, and then my wife had my children. And then I was like, hang on a second. If I learn to drive now, I've got to do the school run. So uh, I strategically just kept forgetting to do it. We were talking about the um, the uh, Paul McCartney thing, where Paul McCartney, obviously a multi multi millionaire, yeah. didn't buy famously did not refuse to buy his son a car when he was eighteen. Based. Um, and recently, Jackie Chan yeah. has basically disinherited his son and said, <laughs> "I'm going to give all my money to charity." So fuck you, basically. Uh, what do you, what are, what are your views on these? Uh... <laughs> well, I I kind of agree because like I don't want my children to be pampered. You know, like, like it is character forming for them to oh, start over oh, and work up. Everybody's saying you can't even drive car. 26 years old and you can't even drive. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Um, no, I don't care. Okay. Uh, like now, now it's a duty I'm avoiding. I don't know, I think there's certain things you should like. You should be able to ride a bike, swim, and drive a car. No? Yeah, I'm not saying I shouldn't be able to. Yeah. I'm saying that now if I do it, I'm, I've roped myself into a lot of extra duties. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, Okay. Um, yeah. I think I think I'd probably buy my kids a house. Um, I don't want. Yeah, like I'm not a millionaire or anything, so it's not like I'm gonna. Yeah. But if I had, like you know, Jackie Chan money, I'd still feel like I'm like. You should have to earn money yourself, right? You should have to. It feels wrong to just not have to. Um. Maven, I saw that. I'm not riding an e-scooter. E-scooters are gay. They're for gay communists. <laughs> JD says, delighted to learn that Roald Dahl was our guy. Well, yeah. Uh, Cam33 says, have you ever heard of the rapper Decker? He is very talented and includes good political philosophy and anti-elite messaging in his songs. I have not heard of Decker. Not uh, big on the rap scene, I'm afraid. Spasticus Autisticus says, Carl, make a dissident case for 40k to you. Well, that's easy. Go on then. Okay, well, uh, where to okay, which which direction to be in? Um it's it's how ex- how extreme a dissident case should I make is the question. So you can make you can start with an entry level, right? As in YouTube safe case, <laughs> whatever it is. Okay, so we'll knock it right. So I'll, I'll cut out like the four or five pro genocide arguments. Okay, all right. right okay. And, and, and again, so there's, there's of course the way that it forces you to learn new skills. Right, mm-hmm. there, there are there are genuine skills, and it, it improves all of your sort of uh, mathematical abilities because you have to calculate things on the fly. You have to improve your cognitive abilities to remember what has happened and to be able to mm-hmm. identify. It's like it's like playing a very complicated game of chess, right? Uh-huh. And then you've got the artistic side where you're, you're building and painting the model, so that's all fun, and you're practicing skills, and it's therapeutic, 
and it's there's a social aspect to it so you're playing with your friends you can't do it on your own so there's there's all sorts of like wholesome aspects to it there but also it is the most anti-egalitarian world scenario uh-huh. that it is possible to create that it is explicitly like congenitally hierarchical uh-huh. and genocidal against anything that's not itself the imperium uh-huh. so it, it's it's like there's a reason that the the wokists have yet to actually crack one. I see. Like, yes. the, the Games Workshop, the company that want that make it, they want more than anything to be woke. They've put out mm-hmm. statements, oh, we're for everyone, we're we're for intolerance and inclusion. It's like, yeah, now tell me about your flagship product. Well, purge the xenos, kill the <laughs> heretic, exterminate the, the unclean. And it's just like, right, yeah. Tell me more about the inclusivity, you know. You didn't, you didn't include the most based argument, which is basically to dunk on a Scottish twink. That, that's that, <laughs> that's right. Also, also Columba hates it. <laughs> Don't worry, Columba, I'm going to paint you up a really nice model, mate. <laughs> no, I like Columba. I don't know, D has mm. been trying to convince Columba He's that gay. his real destiny is to just be a twink and to accept it. I think it's kind of fair. I mean, he does obsess about Italy a lot. Yeah, he also, you've got to be uh, gay if you're into Italy. He also has like sorry a, for the areas. <laughs> there's also rumors like I'm not sure how Columba earns his money. <laughs> he may be a gigolo. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> that seems unfair. No, he's not really. He's not really. A gigolo. Uh, um, what the truck show says. What are your thoughts on patriotic alternative? I think that anyone who says the one book that I would save if I were on a desert island is Mein Kampf is no British nationalist. Is that what he said, is it? Yep. I see. Okay. Uh... Hey, guys, I'm a British nationalist. Isn't the guy we defeated in World War II awesome? No, you prick. I feel like, uh, I feel like uh, Laura makes good tea. So, so all I really know about <laughs> Laura, Laura makes good tea. I know that much. Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, Sage says, here is a mandate for AA. Buy Carl something nice. Also, Carl. I mean, I bought Carl lunch. Yeah. I, bought, I bought him a, I bought him a, a lovely, uh, what was that scone thing? I bought a, uh, that rock, a rock cake. Yeah. It was and good. dinner. And dinner. And two cigars. And two cigars. Thank you. So, um, I didn't send the chat. (laughs) Buy Carl something nice, okay. Also, Carl, I've heard rumours of a Curtis Yarving X Lotus Eaters crossover. Do they have any basis? Um, I mean, possibly. I'm. One thing people have to remember is that I'm not really in charge of it, right? You're not in charge of Lotus Eaters. Well, no, not really. Okay, because like we've got like 15 people. And like you know, they're 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 a manager. There's an office manager. There's a, 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 an editor, uh-huh. and a bunch. Of, and basically, the um, content creators are just left to their own devices to make the content they think is good. So I don't. I mean, I personally haven't got any plans. But I'm not saying any. If you know, if one of them's emailed Curtis and like, hey, can I interview you? Great. You know. Uh-huh. But, I mean, I'm not against the idea. I'm not going to veto it or anything. I think Yarvin may be doing a show with my buddy Ara Mac- McIntyre soon. Cool. Because I saw they were trying to come up with the title earlier. And he said, oh, what about the democracy delusion? I was like, no, that's my, <laughs> that, that's my title. That's my title. Damn it, Aaron. <laughs> um, you know, so we were spitballing with, uh, I suggested, what did I suggest to him? Uh, Real democracy has never been tried. <clears throat> How I learned to stop worrying and love Peter Thiel, <clears throat> and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I like Kurt. Did you meet you met Kurt at the event? I did. Uh, he was very nice. Yeah, I spoke to him a few times. He was. He's very charming. He, he's char- He's got that kind of um, upper class Californian. Yeah, he's got like a slightly spaced out Californian thing going on, yeah. which makes yeah. it you know. No, he, he, <laughs> but he's he's a very nice chap. I think when I met, him. and he's yeah. a very interesting thinker. He thinks laterally. Yeah, interesting guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the NPM says, what is the Holy Grail? That's a great question, um, because it's not clear what the Holy Grail is. It was, I think it was some sort of stone originally, but it got like, um, 
uh, got sort of folded into the idea of a sort of chalice that contained like eternal life or something. It's a mystery, isn't it? Yeah. The, the mystery of the Grail. Mm. What is it? I thought it was thought it was just like a golden cup. Well, that that's the thing. It, I think originally it was supposed to be some sort of stone, like magical stone, but I think it became like a chalice of some sort. I see. But I don't. I I, I don't think it's clear. So. But the, no, no. But the, people say the blood of Christ. No, it wasn't. That's the thing. The the thing about the Grail Knights is it's actually a very pagan story, and this is this is something Evola talks about. The, the 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 sort of Christian layer over the Arthurian mythos is definitely a later edition. He, he has a whole book on the Holy Grail hmm. called The Mystery of the Grail, oh, uh, yeah. which was originally an appendix to Revolt of the Modern World, hmm. which he then released as a separate book. Um, it's got some good stuff in there, but I still don't know what the Grail is. Well, I don't think anyone knows. Have you ever seen Pulp Fiction? Yeah. You know there's that suitcase which is the open and it's just kind of shines in their face? Yeah. It's just that. It's just like, who cares what it is? I think it's just meant to be like a it, it kind something. Of, you yeah, know? it represents the, uh, the sort of transcendent, doesn't it? <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> you can't mention that. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Um, Sense of Cominium says also a, a. I see you have a bottle of Pandarin on the go, a fine Welsh whiskey. At the weekend, Asda were doing Pandaring Legend Red Box for twenty pounds, dropped down from thirty three. I highly recommend it. A lovely drop. Yeah, my dad. My dad left that bottle of Pandarin here. Um, right, go get it. Yeah, yeah, go and get it. Um, it's a bit. I don't know. I, I like uh, I like Scottish malts. I, I hate to be uh, non patriotic, but uh, <laughs> I think we can forgive. Um, but um, I don't know. It's on the like. Right. It's just on the left there, on the table, oh, on right. the table of doom. Oh right, I thought it was in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit. Uh, I don't know. Peaty, I guess. Uh, for my taste, but uh, smoky a little bit. Uh, After the plum and salted caramel vodkas, it's probably going to taste a bit bitter. <clears throat> but anyway, let's let's taste it. Go on. Oh, it smells nice. Welsh whiskey, man. I didn't even know Wales was capable of whiskey. The Welsh can do anything. W wizards going back many years. Oh yeah, how about an economy that doesn't rely on English subsidies? All right, now. <laughs> Did you ever see it? Do you know? I made a video once called "An Economic History of Wales." Oh yeah. Oh, my mother didn't talk to me. I really upset her with that video. I was like, "Shit, what have I done here?" Because I was like, I basically pointed out that the coal mines were kind of a loss, like artificially kept alive for many years. Kind of like a glorified kind of wage scheme, uh, job scheme for many, many years. Yeah, she wasn't happy. At least it wasn't just raw Gibbs. Kind of was. I mean, yeah, yeah, it no, was. They had to work, yeah, they, they had to work yeah. but you know, because yeah, now it's uh, just Gibbs. Yeah, that's the only. That's the only time. That's the only time that. Uh, well, that's not bad. Yeah, proper bottle, mind. Uh, mm. This is Pendarian, the Welsh, the Welsh gold. It's called. Yeah, no, that's right. single malt. It's right now. Yeah, no, you you complaining about the the PT flavour? I quite like it. Let's taste it. I I like um I like Talisca. I like mm. uh. <clears throat> I, I like whiskies that kind of turn. John D. I hate you, Carl. <laughs> yeah, he's calling me a. T he's he's calling me <laughs> a two a two timing c word. <laughs> Thinks I'm two timing him with. I'm still yeah. the I'm still the president of your fan club, John. So don't worry. <laughs> what should I girls ask me and not men? You know that would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, I am married. Uh, yeah, I, I, actually, actually, I think it'd be way more dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Thank uh, God I'm ugly, Phantom. Oh dear. <clears throat> okay. Uh, God, look at the amount of money you're making up me, you son. Of I don't, I don't, I don't, come on, I. <laughs> Well, these are all the super chats I get I know. all the time. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. It's not really super. Like they need to buy courses. That's the main thing. How am I going to pay for all this? Uh... You know, I actually want to do the trivium course that you've got. 
I, I, I haven't done it yet because you sent me a, a link to do them. Buy it now. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, you sent me it for free. But I am actually going to do the trivia when I've got five minutes. Yeah, you I, should. It's actually one of those things that I think would be a good sort of refresher. You should. Right? You should do it. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to do it. Tell her what. Do you know where we did the Jordan Peterson stream before? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I'm going to do at some point when I get a bit of time, I'm going to go through, um, uh, I'm going to try to rewrite Peter Peterson's communist conservative manifesto, right? The conservative manifesto. I'm going to try to render it into plain, legible English, good sentence structure. I want to make the argument make sense. To present it in its best possible form, you know. I it is a shame about that sort of conservative manifesto, but like like I, I did a video response to it as well. Said that they can't really be a conservative manifesto. The, the the very concept of a manifesto as sort of a priori set of instructions is inherently leftist. So, you know, what can you do? The wonder of four. You said the trivium is very much needed. Yeah, by you. You haven't used capital T. You haven't used a full stop. People have to use punctuation. Yeah. Know how to use a comma and Distinct a semicolon. Like merit. Merit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe when well, maybe when I'll do that stream, I'll bring back merit for that one stream. Merit sale. Just yeah. just for the stream only, you know. I saw some of the comments being like Carl slagging off the mid century Germans, even though they'd have stopped all these things we hate. It's like they're not the only people who would have stopped all the things we hate and the things. There's a bunch of things about the mid-century Germans I actually don't like, and you shouldn't like either. Like their egalitarianism, for example, their their wild socialism, but their, also their socialism within one race. As also, it were. they're just retards. Yeah, like they're just genuinely retards. You know, it was it was, it was funny. I was really, you know, um, several of the prophets of doom met Hitler. Oh yeah, including Toynbee. Yeah, and Spengler. And Spengler, after spending like two hours with Hitler, bearing in mind now he was the Fuhrer, went home and said, he's an idiot. This guy's going to get us all fucking killed. This guy's... Like Spengler literally said, I think he's an idiot. Um, <laughs> I'm reading Decline of the West at the moment. Which, which, and then wrote a book called... Hitler's a retard. <laughs> It was called uh, fifteen volume treaties. The, it was called, yeah, uh, awesome book, The Hour of Decision. Oh, yeah. Amazing German yeah. title, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was then subsequently um, banned by the mid-century Germans oh, due yeah. to his critical comments. Oh, yeah. And uh, right, Hitler was a snowflake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just cringe, like simping after the losers of World War Two. Why would I want to do that? They'd have stopped work. Well, look, fucking so would ISIS. You know, like loads of people have stopped stop woke. Why do we have to choose those? I mean, if you if do you think if, Cecil Rhodes would be pro woke, if we had like the the British Empire, of, yeah, Winston you know, Churchill would be eighteen fifty or something, they would have stopped it. You do know? you think Winston Churchill would be in favour of any of this shit? Hey, do you, do you, <laughs> Sir Winston, can a boy be a girl? He'd be like, no, you buffoon. <laughs> you know, obviously, like yeah. for fuck's sake, it doesn't take Nazi Germany to stop woke. No, true. <laughs> That's yeah. such a retarded thing. Like, yes, they may have something else in mind, but okay, well, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's 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 move on. Um, <laughs> you think they're the only people who? Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come on, indeed. Yeah. Uh, the truck show says, "What do you think of the worm pill? What is the worm pill? The idea that parasitical overgrowth in everyone has made everyone <sighs> a slave to the parasite hive mind." And recklessly sins twenty four seven. Sargon of Kakad. Oh. Did you duck Marky C? I don't even. I don't know what that means. But do you mean did I debate Mark Collett in twenty eighteen and demolish him? Yes. Is that what they're asking? I don't know. I don't know who Marky C is. I think they're talking about Mark Collett. But yes, I have debated Mark Collett. Okay. So no, I'm not ducking it. Is Mark Collett desperate for relevance by attracting my attention? That is also true. Mm -hmm. I. The only time to be fair, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean to Mark Collette. I see, I don't, I don't see hate the guy or anything. I just, it's just such stupid moves. Like, I, I've never really watched fucking, this stuff to be honest. Like, I, think I, I was stupid with UKIP, man. Fucking, this is really retarded. You know, I, I remember if I seem to recall Russell, I used to watch Russell Brand years ago 
And I'm fairly sure that Russell Brand. What? Did he have Mark Collette on? I think Russell Brand. No, 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 great. no Russell Brand, <laughs> before he was famous, had a show called We Brand. Oh, yeah. Where he did really weird things. He had a boxing match with his dad. He took in a tramp. God, I hope his dad won. Right. He took in a tramp. Yeah. And like, it was really odd. Like, he bait, like, he gave a tramp a bath and like looked after him for a week. And like, he was trying to like get to know him and all this sort of stuff. Okay. And I'm fairly sure in that same series, he spent a week with Mark Collette. Like, when he was, <laughs> he was like, why are you a Nazi, mate? And all this sort of stuff. Oh, that's a good you know, question. and all this sort of stuff. Um, so I well, see, I mean, I, 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 like you can say, at least in Mark Collette's defense, that at least he has a sincere conviction. But I don't think it, I don't think he's grifting, but that's not no. exactly high praise. But again, I don't, I don't hate Mark Collette or anything, but like, you know, it's kind of cringe to me. I, I mean, my, my in light of sensible center, right. My my recommendation is, if the organisation is on a government list, <laughs> you're probably not winning. You probably. I'm just like, you have to box clever a little bit. Um, that's all. There's ways and means to talk about things without, like, getting yourself like listed by intelligence services and having like an officer track you. You know. Not that they're not tracking us, Carl, but, I, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I know that they think that what we of us, but, like, it does seem... I mean, the thing is, right, and, like, conversely, Patriotic Alternative have done some worthy protests of late, actually, that have got the Guardian to spur the fuck out. And so, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be mean to them. Right they're going to... They they're good at doing those stunts that yeah. then give them more publicity. I'll give them yeah. that. And know. they get they they, yeah. they provoke the left into revealing their hand, which is very good and very mm -hmm. useful. So like while while I might not ideologically agree with Mark Collette's Hitler simping, mm -hmm. I'm not saying they haven't done anything productive, mm -hmm. but I would never join them and I don't mm -hmm. really want to deal with them. Mm -hmm. I I don't know Mark. I hope British, British government. I hope you're listening. No, I don't I, know. I mean, I, I've never talked to him. No, um, well, I've debated. Him. I I did talk. I had Laura on once. She was a nice girl, but mm -hmm. we talked about the importance of language, and Not you know, yeah. uh, and we talked about yeah. like what does the word fascism mean, right? Mm -hmm. And like, are you a fascist, basically? You know, and she was just explaining like on that show, she was just explaining what she stands, you know, what she stands for and stuff, and. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, they are trying to, I think they're, they are trying to help at the end of the day, but it's difficult. We're in such but, a difficult situation at the moment. But the thing is, know. a lot of the time, the, the, the problem is, I think your analogy of, of the wrestling match here is actually really useful mm -hmm. because it seems to be that they are content to play the heel. Playing the heel, yeah. And yeah. that's not wise because that no. gives the establishment a free punching bag. Mm. And it makes it very easy for them to be like, look, the Nazis. I mean, this is what I've so said about uh, the whole... I've, I've been saying this over and over, especially since I started the whole sensible center idea, right? Mm. Which is that the, at the moment, right, Hollyoaks... I don't know if you've seen that show, Hollyoaks. Um, it's like a... I know what it is. It's like, a, it's like a, like a, like yeah, a shitty soap is, yeah. type thing. Um, actually, went to school with a guy who was in, who was in that for a while. Oh. Um, it's actually... Did it pay well? Should I say that on there? Uh, well, I always remember. Now he's in trouble. <laughs> I, I always remember this moment yeah. where we were stuck outside this club. You know, like uh, back in the day, you go to a club and there'd be like uh, queues outside. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were, we were like, all of us were still, and he was like, Shall I play the Hollyoaks card to get us into the club? Right. Yes. Go on. Yeah, he, to be fair, I think he did. And he did get us into the club, but still. Um, do, do young people now go to clubs? I saw that club attendance is down about 40%. Yeah, because I like 40%. Yeah. Where, yeah. where I live in Swindon, it, it was always the bottom of town that was heaving when I was in my 20s. Mm. It was massive. And now all of the nightclubs are shut down. There aren't yeah. any of the nightclubs. Yeah, same in, same in my hometown. Yeah. 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 And, and these nightclubs used to be amazing as well. If young people aren't going to them, then they're going to shut down. But the thing is, they used to be brilliant. Like we, oh my God, so many great nights with me and my mates out in these clubs. And obviously I got too old, which mm -hmm. you know, fair enough. But like if young people are going to clubs now, what the fuck are they doing with their time? 
Not having fun. They're just on their phone. Yeah. Not talking to each other. It's fucking lame. Wanking. Young people, you suck. Yeah. Losers. That's why they're not having sex or yeah. pulling yeah. or... Let's you yeah. fucking incels. Go and get a beer. But anyway, this brings, <laughs> this brings me back to what I was saying, right? Which is that... Which is that... The thing, the thing is, is that... Uh, hang on. Yeah. Playing games and doing drugs. No, no, no. I was playing games and doing drugs as well. But we still went to clubs. We still went and had fun. I never did drugs. I never drank. I never went out. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, I'm joking. I, 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 always, I always hated it. I always hated it, though. I don't know. It depends it, why you went, right? Because a, a lot of the time you go out to try and pull, and then you fail at pulling, and then you'd be annoyed, right? But also, if you went out to have a good time and just get drunk and, like, you know, have fun with your mates, so, like, so we, we used to have some really great rock clubs in Swindon. Right. Yeah. And so and I that's my sort of music. And so we go out and just get hammered and listen to some great music and just dance and whatever. And it was really great night. And so it like it's gutting these places are closed down. I was I was from a little town in Wales. There was one club which was the cheesy club, right? I used to be like, oh, we go there with the we'd go there, 17, 18 year old. Mm-hmm. Friday night, Saturday night. Yep. Reach for the stars, you know. And I was in the in the back of the club, there was a uh, there was a wall oh, yeah. with a it had like people had drawn on it, right? And there was a spot on that wall with like um it just said jackpot. And that was basically the wall. Like if you'd pulled, yeah, you'd, you'd get off on the jackpot wall, you know. But then there was a there was a there was a slightly <laughs> there was a slightly cooler club oh, yeah. down the road where like they played a little bit more. Yeah. But basically if you wanted to go anywhere good you'd have to get a card in really. before you'd i went have to, before to, I went to university yeah. i lived in newquay so we had loads of clubs and they were all re- pretty good actually now i think about it back yeah. back then like a lot of them uh, we were very like i don't want to say sophisticated because we weren't sophisticated but like we had a high sense of what a good club was mm-hmm. and there were lots of clubs that like looking back now i guess young people would probably consider to be amazing because look at what the, the options are now right mm-hmm. but like back then we were very discerning and so we do like, oh, these these clubs are shit, even though they're massive and they're always packed. Like, it was really weird. And then then I went to university in Coventry, and there were loads of clubs there. And I moved to Swindon. There were loads of clubs here. And so, yeah, and they're a good variety as well. Uh, I feel bad for young people now, man. We were lucky. Did you ever go through that era where people used to drink like absinthe, you know, yeah, just yeah. like, you know, shots of. I was never a fan. Two, three shots of absinthe. Yeah, you'd, you'd be absolutely fucked, yeah. you know. Flaming Drambuies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway. I like tequila. I forgot what I was saying, though. Anyway. I'm sure it's be good. sensible and stay centred. Um, That's correct, yeah. Oh, no, Hollyoaks, right? Yeah, yeah. They ran a storyline recently about black pill incels. Have you seen it? Let me show you. Uh, I saw the... Um, uh, 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 Connor did one about the Coronation Street, um, like, you kipper. Yeah. Who's like beating up immigrants? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, like, if it wasn't for the beating up immigrant children, everything he said would have been absolutely based. Right. Let me let me let me just show you. Um, I'll just share my screen so you can see what we're we're looking at here. See this here, right? Yeah. This figure, an incel black incel black pill ideology, right? This is what they're pushing dark on dark web search. You mean yeah. Twitter? Yeah. This is what they're look look this this character yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Now, how rigged society is against this? Well, I mean, try mm-hmm. getting a career in the RAF, lad, as a white man. So, the point the point I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make is right. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, the monitoring of the quote unquote far right was moved from the police mm-hmm. to Intelligence services and uh, counterterrorism prevent right prevent mm. and from right a focus on radical Islam to all this sort of stuff. Okay, yeah. So they are um, the radical left control the government, right? So we know this. Yeah. Okay. One, we know this. Number two, we know we have literally just been told that the FBI have got a special place. For America First and certain uh, Zuma well-known internet personality, right? Don't they have weirdly long fingers as well? <laughs> yes. That, uh, whenever yes. I see the clips, like, what is yeah. really long fingers? Maybe I'd right, so, I do have short. So, okay, you're sensible, you're centred. 
I'm going to join the 2024. I mean, you understand what I'm saying, yeah, it's right? Fucking retarded. Yeah. Like, dude, whatever. Like, the the government is making a box. <laughs> you can jump in the fucking box and paint the target on your back, yeah. or you cannot do that. Why don't you just start questioning how many cookies could be baked? You cannot do that. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's fucking retarded. So yes, uh, it's I, all I'm saying is, don't be stupid. Yeah. Because when you're stuck in a jail cell, none of those people who are giving you likes on Twitter are going to give a shit. No. Those people who they can't went do to jail, if they did. Those people who went to jail for Trump, he didn't, he, did? he didn't help them. Nobody gave a shit. You what know, you you're They're still in jail. They're still in jail. None of, none of your... We interviewed one of the January 6th guys. And he, like, Josh interviewed him, and he's like, fucking hell, this has been a tremendous injustice. Like, even then, okay, let's let's say, you know, everything that the mainstream said about the January 6th rioters is true. Two years in jail without trial is un- is beyond the pale. Right? It's just... Anyway. So to, to, my point is, we are what I've shown you, the government painting a box. They're literally showing you on TV what they're after. Anyone who stands in this box is in trouble. Right. So what don't you do? You don't go and stand in the box. Don't shave your head, call yourself an incel, and make rape jokes on Twitter and support bloody... Oh, I'm feeling <laughs> you attacked now. Jesus. You understand what I'm saying, <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about your rape joke. <laughs> you, know, uh, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, yours was kind of like a double negative. It's yeah, quite yeah, clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about these guys yeah, yeah, are like, yeah, yeah. they're kind of pro-rape. Yeah, yeah. You know, not cool. No. Um, but the, the, and the thing is that I feel bad because like, I don't want to just you know, like, use these people as punching bags. Like, so like I said, I don't hate Mark Collette. I don't hate Laura Tower, or, Tower mm. or anything like that. I don't, I don't hate them. And, you know, the protests have been effective and good for doing effective things. But your framing is just terrible. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, hit the simping is cringe and like you're you're just making yourselves look like obvious villains and I don't think mm-hmm. that's a good strategy. So, so the thing is, is that... And Nick, Nick Fuentes as well. It's like, like, I don't hate Nick Fuentes. I did a debate against Hassan Piker at Destiny with Nick Fuentes because... Did, did you? Yeah, right. but this was a few years ago before he was famous. And so nobody knew who he was. It was mm-hmm. He was just a Catholic at the time, right? And he was quite articulate, right? Mm-hmm. He, wasn't, he wasn't bad in the debate. But no one knew he was going to be like, yeah, okay. And also, the Nazis, they wouldn't do the Holocaust. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so yeah. what are you doing? I, I, I think that... Um, can I put this? Uh, we watch Mistakes Made yeah. by Spencer. You know, I told I, I told Spencer this yeah. like when, when I talked to him. Yeah. You know, what I'm frustrated by is just a refusal to learn yeah. from e- obvious errors, Right. We all watched the disaster of the Charlottesville. We all watched the disaster of January the 6th. So to watch people after all of that, just, oh, yeah, let's just leap into the next fucking trap. That yeah. you know, At some point, I have to say, well, either these people aren't honest actors or they're so stupid that they might as well be. Yeah. You I understand mean, what I'm saying? Like, I, And I'm happy to take all of the flack in the world for you know being a clown in UK. Right. Mm-hmm. But at least I was consciously being a clown in UK and I wasn't. But also you've learned. Yeah. But I also. We all learned from it. You know. But yeah. 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 And it was to see what would what the system would do, you know. Mm-hmm. But but also I didn't do anything that was like, right. OK, now there's a permanent black mark. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, you know, you, you denied the Holocaust. So you did this. Well, no, 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 no. Come on. Don't be fucking stupid. Yeah. Like you were, you operate in the real world. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, it's like. Can I put it? Um, imagine like you're a you're a dissident Catholic living under the rule of Edward the Sixth, or you're a dissident Protestant living under Bloody Mary or something. Okay, you'd know. You'd have to box a bit clever, right? You don't go out there. Oh, you know, I'm gonna um, under under Edward the Sixth. I'm gonna go out. You know, five Hail Marys. I love the Pope. You know, you're gonna get yourself killed. You have to be smart. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that. Uh, you know, I will say though, to come back to the original question, PA, in fairness to them, are more sensible than some of those other groups. 
<laughs> they have, which is not, yeah, saying, not, not saying much, but not you, saying are right, much. you are right. They have been basically a yeah, bit no, better in their presentation you, than some of the others. You are right. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure I saw that one of them was arrested for terrorism or something. Right, yeah. But I, I don't, don't take my word yeah, for okay. it. I can't remember. I'm a bit drunk, so I might be wrong. Someone was arrested for terrorism, so obviously disavow. Um, mm -hmm. the, the truck show has said, but isn't any effective and real resistance to the system going to attract attention from MI5? Effectively, we have to do a form of cohesive movement, which PI, PA are doing. This isn't meant as a dig. I respect you both, but eventually we have to organize. The trouble is, is that organization, remember, all power is in the organized minority, okay? They know this. So it draws the eye of Sauron like nothing else, okay? And I just don't think we are in a spot. We just don't have the power to well, do that because they'll literally crush you like a grape. You don't even have the power to get a mouse mat that sits flat on the fucking Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, look at that. What is <laughs> going on with your mouse mat? Sorry, yes. It's offensive. It's incapable organization. Sorry, yes, exactly. Patriots uh, alternative wouldn't even want you. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, the, yeah. This, this, Dave, uh, distributor Dave made a great point about this. So, look, whatever it is, like, this is why the alt right failed is because they didn't have, like, essentially, like a, a middle class narrative mm -hmm. to be able to allow people to publicly profess their allegiance mm -hmm. without being shamed out of society. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whether you like it or not, that is the reality of it. Mm. And you've got to have that to be able to bring in money and respectability and you can complain about the fairness of that all you want mm. but that is a necessary thing so the, so the thing is that having having studied successful revolutionary movements in the past right yeah. and for anyone who wants yeah. to do that there's a great podcast by mike duncan the guy who did mm. the history of Rome called revolutions mm -hmm. it's a really good podcast really recommend it but i mean i think i talk about this in the populist illusion somewhere mm. like lenin right even hitler these people, it's not like they didn't have some elite backing. Lenin they had, had massive corporate backing. Yeah, as did, right, and Hitler. Hmm. He wasn't just like, it wasn't just like a few ragtag guys, he right? He had loads of academics. They had a, yeah, and they had the old conservative German establishment, the, yeah. the remnants yeah. of the old Prussian. And yeah. They had a lot of people behind them. Yeah. We don't have that. No. So it's a hide into nothing is what I'm saying at the minute. Um so it, it's really just being realistic about where we are. But, and I, I just want to be clear as well, like, because yeah. I'm sorry, but just national socialism or fascism or anything like that, like, it's not good. It's just not good as an ideology. There are flaws in the ideology itself mm. that we could spend hours going over. Mm -hmm. Right, it's like these things are just not good in and of themselves. They don't produce yeah. the results you're looking for. I, I also don't think there's much They're, value in we are kind of endlessly rearticulating basically 20th century ideologies Absolutely. because all I all that, I've talked about this before ideology 18th century ideology right, that's what we need or <laughs> I, I've said this before basically all ideologies right yeah 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 are kind of post hoc rationalizations of what power's already done mm -hmm. right this, so this is exactly Oakshot's position on yeah. all ideology yeah, exactly right. And Oak Shop, All was, Oak Shop was right. It's also Pareto and various other people who pointed at height even. It is like you have a disposition, you have a feeling, you have a power does stuff, right? And somebody then has to justify it I'm after the fact. Yeah, go on. So Sensum Communum says, and yet, Carl, the end game of liberalism, classical or not, is far worse. No, no, no. Fascism is a part of the end game of liberalism, right? Fascism is innately managerial. Like mm -hmm. It's intrinsically rationalistic and managerial. Mm -hmm. It is a, an outgrowth of revolutionary socialism. Mm -hmm. You are just on the same train. Mm -hmm. You're just getting off at a later stop. And this is the point. Don't be on that fucking train. Mm -hmm. right? you know, this is why traditionalism and sensible centrism is a much is a non-ideological way of approaching politics. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're operating like the, and the sense insensible is important. The, the root word there is important because you're acting from experience directly enacting on the world rather than from an a priori ideological perspective, mm -hmm. like fascism or like Nazism or like communism. Mm -hmm. you know, we are in the real world with real people who are really dealing with real problems as presented by reality mm -hmm. through the sense datum we get, not through rationalistic calculation, 
-hmm. that's the difference yes um the truck show i will say though i'm not defending Mussolini here but i, <laughs> right, I will say Important caveat i'm not defending Mussolini. right i will say though that but... in the case of italian fascism he literally just went to the he went to he marched on rome yeah he said here's my uh i just want to leave yeah based that that part of what he did right not here's my like here's my ready-made out manifesto i, I, I want to run the show he spent right? what 15 years as a socialist yeah but so he had a manifesto. it doesn't it, it, it doesn't he, matter no, because no, no. so he had he had it all planned but he, if you look at how fascism developed in italy yeah it changed he had a period as socialist he had a period as a yeah. as a classical liberal what? believe it or not yeah he, he had a period as so basically basically the point is whatever that ideology was basically like literally was basically what Mussolini made up well, one you know, thing, after one, the point one thing i kind saying. of hate about ideology itself is the idea that it can be detached from a time and a place mm -hmm. it can't like italian fascism is so in interconnected with the formation of the italian nation state yes that it becomes weird when you're like okay so now we're going to take that to france it's like why what do you, what do you this is the whole point the france? All, you all of those are uh, all of those moments are tied to the time and the place. Yeah. You can't abstract them out yeah, exactly. and it, export them. Or, exactly. And this is the whole problem with trying to make, um, you know, what was English classical liberalism, trying to abstract that and, and like giving it to the French, giving it to other people. No, or, giving it to the French specifically yeah. is what turns it into sort of a proto-fascism through Rousseau. And th this is, this is, I mean, look, Giovanni Gentili, I think it was, in The Origins and Doctrine of Fascism, talks extensively about what was the guy who was about who was instrumental in the formation of the italian nation state uh i think his name was M mazzini or something that's like. it. mazzini yes yeah. that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. he, he 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 explicitly goes on about how it's essentially a continuation of mazzini's protocols and it's like okay great but this is to deal with the problems of the divided cities of italy yes not to the ancient continuum of England, for example, right, or the, yes. the highly like intellectual nature of France, right, mm -hmm. or the deeply confused nature of Germany, right? It's it's mm -hmm. a very Italian solution to an Italian problem, and that's mm -hmm. fine. But it can't go anywhere else other than Italy and work. Exactly, it didn't yes. really work in Italy, but like mm -hmm. it can't go anywhere else. And this is the problem with ideology: is it li it's a lie that oh, you can just take these set of political traditions and apply them somewhere else and they'll just work it's like no they won't they never do exactly you're right yeah they no, never I, do. I agree with that and what the, the thing is is that my view is what what is called ideology is a description after the fact most of the time yeah. most of the time it's says even right absolutely even lock right 100 even lock was basically plucked to justify stuff they'd already done they were like oh where can we find oh this dude Right, that, that, that'll do, you know. Well, what, what's great? What's, what's great? Yeah, no, no. Locke is literally justifying the American colon, uh, the English colonization of the Americas. That's literally what Locke's philosophy is for. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's exactly as you say, and it and it works for the English in America because they're English. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, yeah. It's, it's, sorry, it's just bollocks. I, I have the view that if you're in the mode of outlining your ideology i mean this is why the jordan peterson manifesto failed right yeah it can't work you can't write a manifesto to embody the sort of the sort of position we're trying to come from here which is yeah. not an ideology no. essentially it's a um okay anyway. but it is a kind of will to power you know the truck show says in 2021 ct went to visit ray who runs bitshoot to monitor the site more and especially watch out for the terrorist group. The Who's CT is it counter terrorism, is it? Maybe. As apparently they were very, very dangerous and well organized. I just want to say we, we've spoken to the lads of BitChute and they've always been absolutely brilliant. The the problem that if, if BitChute ever senses anyone, it's because the government has made them do it. The, the, the British government may uh, actually yeah. shut down loads of sites on there. Uh... BitChute's based in the UK. Yeah, uh, CT are clueless about our scene. What a joke. No, they're not. The, the thing is, they're not the truck show, right? I'll, I'll give you an example, right? I'll give you an example. On um, the Southern Poverty... No, on um, Southern Poverty Law Centre, 
right? Which we were looking at a document earlier, weren't we? Yeah, but that was on the British uh, government website. British government website quoting, um, quoting Southern Poverty Law Centre. Yeah. On, on the SPLC, uh, they have a spreadsheet, right? Where they have, um, you know, the TRS guys and the Enoch yeah. and all those guys. Next to Ben Shapiro. Right. They have a spreadsheet where they track guests on their show, on guests on TRS, mm. okay, by date, frequency. And basically the whole point is they, they run this whole analysis and they say, like, oh, we have noticed that basically after deplatforming them and so on, they become more isolated and they've booked. Not like I've got, got my spreadsheet for unpopular opinions. Yeah. They basically like did that mm. for them. Deeply autistic. Yeah. Right. Deeply autistic, like obsessive detail. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, oh, well, we've noticed that they, they now book almost nobody outside of their inner circle. Right. If that's not knowledge of this, I mean, that's better knowledge of the scene than, than anybody watching the show has got. Mm. So I, I, it is not the case that they're clueless about the scene. They're not. I have seen. No, they're watching carefully. I have seen government, I have seen documents from intelligence services australian ones british ones um uh american ones where the level of detail is like you know they even get into like drama like oh this dude has fallen out with this dude like sometimes you're getting paid by the government to follow like wignat drama they're music. really into it like they're into <laughs> seriously no, no, no. But... mike mike pinovich is going to do something brilliant watch the the the, 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 AD, the, AD, the adl no <laughs> Who's into who? Who's fallen out with who? Oh, it's like them getting paid to watch Hollywood. You know, the only people who do drama more is yeah. fucking Keith Woods and uh, boyfriend. You know. I don't know anything about. Keith oh, Woods. it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I, matter. I've never yeah. like seen anything from him. I don't know. Like, it's only you who I've ever heard mention the name. Well, I'll forget about him. Oh, okay. uh, all right. Uh, so let's carry on. Um, uh, okay. So. Um, D dropped off when I denounced Hitler. Oh, fuck's sake, D. <laughs> I was just watching the chat. Sorry, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just making sure. D, D is no fan of. Uh... I am. I am enjoying this malt whiskey. It's very good. I, I like the taste. Is it like the good? good like... Be careful, mine. It's like fifty percent or something, forty-seven percent. Oh, but uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Tomorrow's podcast oh. is going to be fun. It's going to be a Helen Dale carry job. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> Helen Dale will have. To, I mean, thankfully, she is strong enough to carry. So thank fuck because I told you I met her. She she is wonderful. I mean, she's wonderful. She's tall though. Oh yeah, she's very tall. towers over me. Me too. You're not very tall. That's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Helen's really, really based as well. So. Yeah, like prop, prop. Yeah, yeah no, like yeah, Helen, scarily Helen, based. Helen, calm down. <laughs> yeah, you know, the government's yeah. watching. Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't you are finger says. Um, <laughs> she is lovely though. I, no, she's, she's a nice girl. Yeah, Support yeah. mine. I really like. Nice girl. Uh, uh, WR finger is just giving me ten dollars. Thank you very much. Means so much. Um, EC ninety said, "Carl, the job spec for developer seems pretty unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Someone with that experience and skills would live in Swindon to work on an alt right podcast is going to be a unicorn." Well, a we're not alt right. B is developer skills like unusual, and C. Well, I guess we'll just hopefully we get a unicorn then. Okay. Well, I mean, the best thing you went to see what the CD could we, we paint. We've got a bunch of applications. So well, I'm not I'm not the one who's in charge of it. Michael's in charge of it. But like, we've got a bunch of applications. So, you know, and we'll, we'll pay them money. I think you'll be surprised, EC90. I think uh, when um, companies struggle to hire, but most companies don't have. Kind of two hundred thousand people plus to hit, right? You've got a very wide base of people you oh, can hit. Yeah, about well, like seven million views a month on YouTube alone. Right. I mean, yeah. Most most companies don't have that, so there's a, you know, yeah. you'd be surprised. And we're, we're a nice place to work as well. Maven politics says I'm a shit boss. An AA viewer has had dinner with Alien Man twice. Alien Man. Alien Man is a guy called Simon Parks, who is a part of the Kook Sphere. Back when um, the election shenanigans were happening, yeah. happening, he was doing these updates saying he was getting intel drops and things like that. Oh yeah, I love uh, I love conspiracies. Yeah, he's like a proper conspiracy man. How have I never heard of him? You may have seen him. Let me let me show you uh, Simon Parks. Uh, Simon Parks. 
Simonparks.org, eh? This dude. Do you yeah, ever see him? I've never heard of him. He he did oh, like I, I love conspiracies too. I can't believe I've never heard of him. I mean, I, I tell you, he, he was selling um shields against 5G. I don't want to get infected by 5G. Which is just um just like a USB stick with a good sticker on it, basically. Brilliant. I'll, I'll, you I'll take ten. Uh I don't know if he's still selling those. But, you know, uh, I th there's a sort of like sweetness to the conspiracy sphere because they're all sort of like pro humanity, you know. They're all, they're, they're, he's they're, kind of got a boom of love to him, right? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And they're, they're, there's there's all, always this kind of like, you know, we just want what's best for everyone, and we're convinced that the government's putting you know five G in the water to turn the frog gay or whatever, and they don't want that. And it's like that. And the, the, the intention is not bad. You know, he um, I think what it is though, they want to tell people stuff they want to hear. So he was he was always going like, um, you know, Trump is in control, patriots, are, you know, we're gonna see like Guantanamo Bay. Oh, I wish I was a plan trust. There, there was gonna be like he was like a proper, yeah, you know, I wish I was. Um, but I remember I watched yeah. the Biden inauguration with commentary from Charlie Ward and Simon Parks, who were the from this sphere um and they were laughing and saying like biden's a hologram and none of this is really <laughs> happening and trump trump is trump is still really the president and all this sort of stuff you know oh, God, i wish i um, wish biden was a fucking hologram so you know patriots in control <clears throat> yeah no i it's just such a cope isn't it that's the problem in, they're selling people like false hope basically mm. that's what it is um mm. Which is, you know, yeah, it's, not, it's kind of like a, like a trust fraud in a way, I guess, yeah. or something like that. Uh, the, I, the, com a confidence trickster, I guess you'd call it. You know. Yeah, but the thing is, I, I do think a lot of them aren't consciously doing it. I feel like a lot of them are like they've kind of deluded themselves into believing. No, 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 this can't be the case. You know, like, I don't think they're cynical. Actors. Well, he he was he would always be like, oh well, and sources have told me, you know. Uh, and, maybe and and the thing is, is that yeah. he had a weird way of predicting the news like three days in advance, really? which made which which is why he ended up getting loads and loads. Right. Okay. And I started watching. I was like, oh, okay, let's see where this. Because if you remember, hmm. when Trump refused to concede, we were totally off the fucking reservation. I know. It was great. There was a, there great was, day or two. It was for for, for a couple of, like about a couple of weeks there, we were like, what the hell is happening? This I is the being in the office. And everyone's like, Trump's not conceded. And uh, we've got a pull-up machine. I was just doing some pull-ups. And I was like, oh, it's going to get, yeah. get good. But it didn't get good. And, yeah. like, oh. and then Bolsonaro, if you skip, it didn't get good. I was like, yeah, I know. I know. This season of American politics has been very disappointing. Yeah, it's been poor. We need, we need a good blow-off. Uh, yeah. doesn't look like it's going to happen. Though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop paying attention. I'm going to change the channel. <laughs> um... When uh, WRF Finger says, when will AA appear for a symposium on the Lotus Eaters? Great question. When are you going to come on the podcast? After losing weight, maybe? Yeah, but you said that like two years ago. I know. You've lost, if you put on weight. Yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> I'll have to <laughs> so lose how about weight. the weight isn't the factor that we're waiting on? I have to lose weight before I appear on, if, I, if I'm going to go on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you on the podcast, though. Okay. All right. I, I agreed to do that new culture thing, but I have to lose two stones. Yeah, but you won't come on my podcast. I'll do yours. I'll no, do no, yours. Peter, Peter Wizzle's great. You should definitely do I'll do yours too. He's a lovely guy. I'll do yours. I'll, I'll come on and be like, uh, you know, hello. <laughs> hello, let me explain Carl Schmidt to you. Uh, yes. Carl Schmidt was a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> but don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> because it turns out that all politics is friend enemy. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, Lady of Shalott says, I've been a follower of Kelly J. Keen for years. She's been a guest on Lotus Eaters many times. Mm. Do you think the uh, gentlemen think the Turks will win the war? Um, I think they already have won the war, actually, which is why wokeness is being put back in the box. Because mm. Turf Island has actually defeated the gay on this issue. I've always thought that the, 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 the trans issue would be the first one to be it's put away. It's the weakest one. It's the weakest By one. By right? far the weakest one. And it only took Scottish women in the Scottish Parliament pulling up their skirts 
is showing their vaginas to the Scottish cabinet <laughs> for them to be like, okay, I think it's time to put the transgender issue away, lads. I mean, oh, it's driving the women did you, mental. Did, did you see Look at my cunt! Did you see? <laughs> That's literally what they were doing. Like, literally, oh, I was pointing at their crotches. Cunt! Look at this! And it was like, okay, <laughs> enough. Enough. Uh, did you see on Twitter a lot of the Black History Month grift is going badly? They're struggling to get bookings. Yes, I did. Um, that's a good sign. Yep. You know, I've had one booking this Black History Month. Yeah, well, that's one too many, isn't it? It's like, yeah, their grift is dying. Good. Um, yeah. On the, on the, uh, I really like Kelly J Keen because. She really wants to talk about feminism whenever we're hanging out and we're talking about stuff. And the thing is, I'm obviously like not not feminism, but like women's issues. And I'm obviously some kind of misogynist, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she's a really nice person, mm -hmm. and on, per, on a personal level, I think she, I really like her, right? And mm -hmm. I think she's a really like just regular English lady, you know, mm -hmm. really friendly to talk to. And so I always have to like bite my tongue not to be trollish mm -hmm. when she's saying, "Oh, these are women's issues." I'm like, yeah, they are. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't say anymore. Don't say anymore. Because she's lovely. She's really, yeah. lovely. you know. I actually really like her. Okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Monothalma says, "A piece of drunk life advice for an aspiring young historian, please." <laughs> Me or you or uh... don't eat the yellow snow. Um, which is good advice. Do a PhD. Right, right. Is that good advice? Well, typically you get your PhD published as a book. That will teach you how to do book proposals. You can then start bringing out books. And um, then try to transition to write for a proper audience, I would say. Well, yeah, don't ask me. I, I couldn't tell you how to be an historian. I don't have a PhD. So... I mean, I think I think you have to pretty much in, in this day and age to be a professional historian. You probably need to, you know, get a PhD. I'd imagine, and come out the other end of it without resisting like yeah. woke and his, you know various strands of historicism and uh, yeah. Hayden. They'll try to like teach you Hayden White. See, my, my uh, advice, my yeah. advice, this is all technical, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff. Yeah. My advice, right, is actually pick the, um, the, whatever, the, whatever the, the proper term for like the number authentic interpretation of history is, uh, Herodotus is right. It was two and a half million Persians, right? Right. Yeah. That's, that's the, the, the authentic numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Don't fall into modernist revisionism. This mm -hmm. is obvious, total bullshit. Mm -hmm. Two and a half million, they drank rivers dry. Right, You mm -hmm. commit to that position. That's my advice to the modern story. Because yes. the, the, modern, the modern position is, A, not only overflowing with realistic, serious, professional historians, <laughs> which are fucking boring, right? But it's, it's also, look, what do they know? They're two and a half thousand years out from the events, right? Yeah. Herodotus was talking to the guy who got took around the Persian camp. Mm -hmm. Two and a half million it is, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Fuck that person. <laughs> Fuck modern historians. What about, um, I think Bronze, Pur <laughs> I think Bronze, Bronze Purbit says somewhere, I think he said it in his book, uh, which, which is a good fun if you haven't read it. He says basically a lot of history is lies. Well, duh. And the reason that it's lies is because it's written by nerds. Obviously. And nerds have always have an incentive to lie. You know, which is, which is have true. you ever read Pericles' funeral oration? No, I haven't. Known. It's brilliant, right? And there's a bit in it that's a genuine piece of like timeless wisdom where Pericles is like, listen, there is a problem with recounting circumstances because men hear someone has done something and think, I can't persuade myself I could do the same. And so yeah. I don't believe you did it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they start downplaying everything that someone else has done, these great events that other people have done, because they themselves don't feel that they're capable of those heroic achievements. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what modern historicity is. It's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, I'm I'm some fucking nerd who's never left Cambridge and I've mm -hmm. never been punched in the face. I yeah. don't believe that Darius brought two and a half million men from the Persian Empire. It's like, well, look, 
Uh-huh. You know, Darius. Do you know? Uh, sorry, Cyrus. Do Cyrus. You, yeah. Do you know? No, no, it was Darius actually. It wasn't Cyrus invading? No, Xerxes invading. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, but do you know how Xerxes counted his men? No. He literally got. He counted out twenty five thousand, drew a square around them, and then got them to cross the Hellespont. Then he got another. He filled that square. Base. And then base. Got them to base. Make. Base. Yeah. How would you count millions of men? It's good. It's good. That's point. a good. That's a good standard. Good right? okay, it's going to be inaccurate to a few men per square. Good. Right. But that's actually a really clever way of doing it. Nice. And one historian's like, no, nah, he didn't. He can't count. It's like, no, you weren't there and you don't fucking know. Mm. Shut the fuck up. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely serious. Shut the fuck up, modern historians. You don't know. Yes. These people there were not incompetent. One, one of they were the... not incapable of counting. One of the terrible things that modern historians do as well is that they always try to come back to a um, material reason for people doing things. Absolutely. Not the like the transcendent dishonor. the transcendent spirit that really drove them no, no. a lot of the time. It, you know, literally, or... the reason Xerxes... I mean, you know why Xerxes invaded, right? Go on. Because the Athenians insulted him by burning down Sardis. Bad, bad. And literally yeah. he had a servant in his ear going, remember the Athenians, remember the Athenians, remember the Athenians. And he's like, yeah, good point. I'll spend five years gathering supplies so I can lead the largest expedition in all of history to go and fucking raise Athens. And he did it. Based. <laughs> it was kind of based, actually. It's like, yeah, yeah it, was kind of, it was kind of based. But, like, I, I just hate modern historians. I'm, I hate the, the, oh, no, he couldn't have brought millions of men. Why not? The Persian Empire yeah. was the largest empire in history until that point. If anyone yes. had access to millions of men, it was it was Xerxes. Yes. Anyway, sorry. Yes, indeed. Uh, okay. Uh, and another no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and another. Um, Matt C says, "A favorite Aphex Twin album and song." Um. Well, I always liked the the famous one with the funny uh, video with the monster in it. Window licker. Yeah, window licker. I always feel like I'm being abused by Aphex Twin videos. Um, but there's a, I can't remember the name of the song now. But they've got one like piano track. It's just like piano, yeah. uh, solo piano piece. Yeah. I quite I kind of like that Aphex Twin song. Uh, mm-hmm. I forget the name of it now. Um, so yes, uh, Ben Frail says. Twenty dollars a month for a verified Facebook account. Ha! Is that true? Yes. Uh, Facebook. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg announced that he was going to copy Elon Musk's idea of selling verification. And I was like, okay, but Mark, the reason I'm paying for verification on Twitter is because I support Elon Musk's project of resurrecting all of our Twitter accounts. I mean, he literally brought me back from the dead. You've done nothing. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I'm not going to support you. You know, like. But there are people who are like, oh, you paid for Twitter. It's like, no, I, I it, essentially, this is Elon Musk's Patreon that I'm prepared to pay into. Yes. You know, because I support what he's doing. I, I still haven't done mine because I'm scared to put my phone number in there. In case, I, in case they're like, because, you know, I think they don't everybody's know. been brought back. Yeah, it's amazing. Apart from me. Really? Oh, right. So you're thinking they'll go, oh, it's, it, ban evasion. Yeah, exactly. So if I put my phone number in, yeah. Roland Rat could be a goner. And uh, then we don't no, want nobody that. wants yeah, that. Yeah, no so wants that, yeah. I need to get like a no, like no, a no, like no, a no, phone, no, another no. phone. Um, no. I was refused. They literally wrote and said, <laughs> "We've reviewed your thing, and no, your ban was just." <laughs> Do you know what I was banned for? Being a prick. I literally replied to a commie. You know that line from uh, Robin Hood. Yeah. You know. I'll, Which one? I'll eat your liver with a spoon or whatever it is. I'll eat your heart with a spoon. Yeah, yeah. That quote from Robin Hood. I mean, out of context, it does sound kind of bad. So they were like, oh, there, yeah, that is a physical threat and violates the policy. Mm. I mean, yeah. That's the only thing I've ever done wrong on Twitter. And because of that, all my other accounts were also what, banned. Man, I was really, like, I, I drink very infrequently, right? So literally once every six months, I'll have a drink. And or like three months in this case, but I was out at uh, the backyard comedy with Dank and a few others, mm-hmm. and I was really drunk. And I got back to the hotel, and John Wong had messaged me, with me. I think your Twitter's back. And I was like, I was really fucking drunk. I was like, 
And so I, I loaded up. To, I lo- I figured out my. I can't believe really drunk. I figured out the login to my Twitter. That I hadn't logged into in about five fucking years, and I saw that I could see stuff. And I could do stuff, and I was like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sat right drunk on the toilet, just being like, how do I deal with this? And I was like, no, I'll do it tomorrow. I just went to bed. <laughs> but it was it was mental. It felt like I'd literally been brought back from the dead. Deplorable patriarch says Nigel Nigel Bigar's new book. Regis Professor of Morality Oxford. Nigel who? I actually met Nigel Bigar. Nigel who? Nigel Bigar. Nigel who? No, I'm joking. You, no, you're real missing name. the joke. I don't get jokes. I don't understand any jokes, even when drunk. I don't okay, understand. Okay, okay. It's autism, mate. Tell me uh, about no, Nigel some more. No, he, I met him. He, he put on a conference that I went to at, at Oxford once. Yeah. Uh, the talk I gave is still up online somewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, he, he has a new book called Colonialism, A Moral Reckoning, shows we did nothing wrong. Devastating to the left as it destroys dishonest critical race theory narratives. My view on the British Empire is very much my view on the Imperium of Man in Warhammer 40,000. Who are the good guys in Warhammer 40,000? The Imperium of Man because they're the humans. And I'm a human. Mm-hmm. Any further questions? So who are the good guys in the realm of empire the British. Why? Because I'm British. Any further questions? Mm-hmm. No. Exactly. You see, the British... This is what I'm trying to say, though. I'm just done. The British oh, Empire... But what about my abstract moral equivocation? I don't care. The British Empire was pro itself. Yeah, exactly. The American Empire fucking isn't. I know. The American Empire is anti-humanity. I know. It's, it's <laughs> awful. This is my whole point. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, exactly, Daughter of Albion. Sorry, we're not sorry. Yeah. No, no, but look, there are no good guys in 40k. Yes, there are. They're called the fucking humans. You're a human. Remember. Fuck's sake. We're going to get this. This is liberal propaganda. Oh, there are no good guys. There <laughs> are. They're us. We are the humans who are constantly being resisted, being eaten by aliens. I just have to apologize to my neighbors here. Yeah, so. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, Mighty Sebastian says, "Hey guys, do you think there are so? Why do you think there are so many low intelligence individuals on the right who seem to revel in its current low status position, oh, particularly yes. the trads you have run into among others?" Doesn't John D have a particularly good uh, analysis of this? What What does he say? I'm sure that he said something a while ago. Uh, if, I, if it's not John, then I apologize for whoever it was. But they, they, there was someone who was making an analysis that it was like, there's a kind of, a, it's a kind of like a position of honor to be mm-hmm. the dissident, forever the dissident. And never, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, you know. The, I understand, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, And so, like, it, it it's, it, these are people who don't really want to succeed because that would mean giving up their status as the outsider and they've made too much of their bones on, on mm-hmm. being the outsider. And they don't really know how to become the inside, the, 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 the power mm-hmm. structure and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it becomes a crutch to people, mm-hmm. you know? And so, it, and, and so it's like being the conservative, forever doomed to failure, but secure yeah. in that position, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they kind of revel in their hopelessness and, or something like this. Yes, right. Literally, Saga's going to need a pint of water soon. Yes, that's true. Um if Sargon was actually based, he'd have joined Labour. I mean, I'm not saying I'm beyond joining Labour. Fucking hell, mate. You drank a lot of this. Jesus Christ. I just noticed. It's that, really nice. That was, a, that was a full bottle, everyone. Uh, okay. It's really um, nice. Who's doing the... I did the cooking. What, hell? I did the cooking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's have a look. What's um, Daughter of Albion saying? Daughter of Albion is saying... Uh, I don't know what she's saying. Something you saying something for weeks. I don't know. What have you been saying for weeks, Sarah? Don't know what she said. I don't know. I don't know. AA slurring. I'm yeah. not slurring. Look at that fucking rattled. Not slurring. <laughs> <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> um, the mini mad cat says AA re coffee machine. Check out a DeLonghi ECP 3420 ECP 3531. Review by Tom's Coffee Corner. Carl, hit me up. I'd love to paint the model for you. Oh, well. Um, I appreciate that, but like the, a lot of it, the the painting is something I want to do myself because I enjoy doing it. Um, go home and drunk? No, I am. Well, I can't go home. I've got to get the train tomorrow. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on a minute. Uh, where are we? Um, Deplore, uh, we did that. Lady of Shalott says, Irish blood, English heart is Morrissey's best. I kind of understand what he's saying as well, because I'm mostly not of English blood. You know what I mean? It's like... But Are you not? No, yeah, mostly not. You know, I'm I'm a total Mongol. I'm partially English, but I'm like you know the questions of racial purity. I definitely fail on. Right. But it's like you, you know. You know. Well, I don't know. I, I'm I'm purely half and half. <laughs> it's not pure, is it? But okay. like, the, the, I'm like, going to embrace my destiny as a as a as a as a, as a mud blood as a druidic Zoroastrian. <laughs> <laughs> Please, that actually sounds cool. I know. The Druidics are, like, I should be a wizard. I've yeah. got it in my blood on both the sides. Druidic Magi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That a actually mage. sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've yeah. seen the Magi robes I want to buy. I've, I've asked my dad. I was like, I want these from Iran. Hold on. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> Iran Magi's robes. These are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually true. Uh, Persian warrior queens. Uh, so look, sounds uh, gay. Uh, not meant to get the Iranian robes. Honestly, they're cool. I'm just going to I can find them. Um, not this dude. Oh, I can't find them now. There's a really cool one I've got my eye on. To uh, be fair, I do like sort of like, you know, exotic foreign costumes, even if like I can never get. Yeah. But you, look at like, the ancient Persians. Like, man, the ancient fucking Assyrians had such drip, man. Yeah. Have you seen, like, uh, just Google. Sure. Persian, um, hold on. Let's see if I can find my Magi robes. This one. That's what. That's the one I want. That does look good. Let me let me show you, folks. I'm going to buy this. I want this robe. That looks good. Look at that trim. Look at that. Look, if I... if my look at trim along the bottom there. Yeah, isn't that cool? Gorgeous. Look at that. And once I get that, I can do Magic Missile. And, and fireball because you're a level one mage, <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> well, no, get 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 the uh, Google search up, Sam. Yeah, go on. Uh, yeah. Search for um, uh, Assyrian king, British museum, right? Uh, right. Um, this, this dude here. Right, get, okay. get, show everyone that, right? Okay. Because not only. Not only is this dude stabbing a lion in the face while holding it by the neck. Yes. But look at this fucking awesome rug. Like see, yeah, it's good. It's good drip. Absolute yeah. fucking drip on this. Look, like, this yes. is the most Chad. Like, does he look phased that a lion is leaping at him? No. He's stabbing it in the chest. Do you know what I like as well? He's got a minion. Uh, he's got a eunuch. This, this is a minion. No, right? Yeah, but notice the eunuch has no beard. No beard, therefore a eunuch. Yeah. But the, the absolute chad of the Assyrian king. And what I love about all of the Assyrian sculptures, the British Museum, not one Assyrian has an expression on his face. No. They're like robot men. They're like conquering cities. They're murdering thousands. And they're just expressionless. This doesn't make any impression on us at all. It's amazing propaganda. Um, AA would like Dune if he could tolerate oh, yeah. fiction. You would do like Dune. That's very thick. It is. But it's also very good. I read it when I was like 13. I didn't appreciate the depth of it when I was 13. I don't really read novels, to be honest. No, no, no. It, but, no, it... Can you do... Remember what, our discussion about it being a rhetorical argument? Yes. Right? Yeah. It, it's worth it. June is really good. Okay. Uh, A.A. <laughs> Shosag on the Iranian... Oh, no. Gone. There was a Persian king in the 19th century, right? Oh, yeah. He had particular taste in women. Oh, I've seen it. The hideous. Have you seen this? Apparent, like, bride of Persia or something. This is... Yeah, she's hideous. No, it's not just one woman. Uh, it's literally his entire court. They all had moustaches. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, this guy had a type. <laughs> yes, he had a definite type. Uh, and what, what's what's really ironic about this is that Eastern women are generally considered to be uh, exotic and beautiful, especially Persian women. But yeah, yeah, yeah. look at the state on these. But why? Do, why does it look like a man in a dress? He liked. He he liked. Uh, this was him. Yeah. 
yeah. he, he just liked them a bit. He liked them fat. And bearded. And mustached. Sorry. Like, look, look at the fucking state on them. Jesus, why? These are all like he had like 30 wives or something. They were all hideous. Imagine, I mean, imagine being able to get 30 every wives. Every single one of them. And every the, single one has a mustache. Yeah, and this was the looker, this one here. <laughs> okay, fair. Right. No, hey man, I'm not I, here to. I, I, judge, I mean, I, mean I, I looked, I looked into the background of that guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was thought possibly to be gay, gay, yeah, and really? to take male lovers on occasion. Wow, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and he made all his wives kind of. It was the height of fashion, apparently, because when they all they started doing it, well, other people started, you know, copying, you know. So, just goes to show. You know how I know that. It's because a bunch of leftists were sharing pictures of that one particular woman. Right. Being like, this was the most desirable woman in the Persian Empire. And it's like, no, this was the <laughs> fetish of the king. Yeah. yeah. Or the, the Shah. And he was clearly into something in particular. Yeah. I bet the average Persian man wasn't like, yeah, that's a babe. Th that particular Shah actually did a tour of Europe. And uh, he came to Europe in the Your the, European woman hideous. in the late. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to see one mustache. <laughs> one mustache among them. Well, he, he came here in the late 19th century. Like he came to Britain, yeah. went went around Europe, and he was just like dazzled by the technology and the modernity and things. Became obsessed yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. He wrote a book uh, of his travels, which became like a bestseller in Europe because it was translated and so on. I went to Europe and didn't find a single mustache on. Do you remember what we were talking earlier on about the effects of modernity on places other than Europe? Yeah. I think that trip that that king had had a devastating effect on Iran because he was obsessed. He was like, I must have this yeah. for Persia. I must have this for Iran now. Yeah. And ever since Can him... call it Persia? Persia's a yeah, much cooler name. They, they, they've, it's definitely lunar energy. They've basically been obsessed with, like, many of their leaders... All the way up until the last Shah, mm. we're obsessed with modernizing, and we Same must be Turkey. we must be like Europe, yeah, Turkey. exactly like Ataturk, Ataturk you know. So it's a weird <clears throat> cringe. Like, I'd prefer the Turks if they were more like Turkish and barbaric. Yeah, they were, they're trying to embody something that yeah. they're not, which is like the like European. France. It's like, why do you want to be a France? France is, is gay. So that's been... the most gay European nation, even more gay than the Italians. Sorry, Furious. Uh, <laughs> see you in the camp, says. I think the American people are collectively shocked by the quality of life shift we are going through. Yeah. Things have been comfortable my whole life. Mm. Do you think we write this ship or we just allow it to get worse? Well, it's obviously getting worse. Like who can who can be like, oh yes, this is the ship being righted right now. No, things are getting worse. And you're being told that it's okay that they're getting worse. I mean Enjoy your 15 minute city. Do you think there's any chance that Blair 2.0 no. makes writes the yeah. ship for a little while? No. The 15 minute city is whatever the WEF want, they're gonna get. And like, I mean, what what are we gonna do about the 15 minute cities? Like literally, you're gonna be confined to a like five mile radius around your house. I reckon yeah. they're not gonna get away with it. I yeah, reckon the push I reckon the pushback is too great. From where? From who? People. Populist lose. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, hang on, haven't you written a book about this bullshit? I think the organized minority has won this one. Yeah, maybe. Uh For fuck's sake. Uh Mark Ferrer says, when will the Europeans realize they have been taken for a ride by us? When will they normalize with Russ if and when Russ achieves its military? The goals? Germans already tried. I mean, I, I'm I'm not sure Russia is going to achieve its military goals at this point. Yeah, I'm not following it at all. Like, because I check in every six months because I'm fed well, up. The, I'm fed up. Yeah, I, like I just can't stand the lies of of war propaganda. Mm -hmm. I can't. Like, I don't care enough to spend my time picking through it in detail. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it's just like, oh, fuck's sake. Yeah, I, it's just that you I can't. I don't think Ukraine is winning like they say they're winning. You know, no. Otherwise, why you know? But I don't. I don't but also, they. I, I do think the Russians are making hard work of it. Yeah. When, when I went through, because I had uh, Furious and Charlie on. Yeah. A couple couple of weeks uh, back, yeah, I think right? I that, and 
when I discovered that all the major fighting for months has been over a town the size of Bridgend in Wales, I was yeah. like, uh, what? Yeah. I mean, like a town like 20 to 30,000 people in I, this I, town. I just want to be clear there, there is something admirable about the Ukrainians fighting, right? Because one of the things that we on, on this side of the aisle, we're like, well, we hate the gay and therefore Ukraine bad. Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, but the average Ukrainian probably isn't plugged into all of that. The average Ukrainian probably is thinking, right, I'm going to do my duty. You know, so there is something admirable to it, but I don't want to give anything to the, the current thing. Uh-huh. And Ukraine has been subsumed into the current thing. And so it's just like, eh. But I don't like the Russians. The Russians are literally orcs. So it's just like, you know, it's literally Mordor invading your country. I, but the thing is, the Ukrainians are literally orcs as well. I don't like so, driving, you know, around here, yeah. lots of little country villages yeah, and lanes and things, right? Flags, right? But, like, I don't like being right in the middle of the countryside as we are here and seeing, like, somebody flying a Ukraine flag outside the One house. One of my neighbours flew a Ukraine flag the other day. I was just like, I don't like yeah, that. It's cringe. It's cringy. It's uh, absolutely cringy. All it's doing to me is advertising how easily proper, I'm in proper, the current thing yeah. propaganda yeah, 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 yeah. exactly yeah. i'm propaganda as the current thing and so like what was the question again just to go back to i can't remember now <laughs> something 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 but, like, I, I don't i don't hate ukraine and i don't like russia but i don't love ukraine and i don't hate russia right and so i you know like, i i'm would like what you were saying earlier about the israel palestine thing my opinion is i just don't care uh-huh. You know, these are foreign problems for foreigners. Jay says, uh, so Thomas Boy says, add Blair's daughter, Catherine Blair, to WWYD. Are you going to look her up? Didn't know Blair had a daughter. Really? Didn't. You know everything about Tony Blair except for the fact that he doesn't know. I don't care about his family life. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. To be honest, no, 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 no. Get get that one up. Right, it's, it's in her defense that she doesn't look like Tony Blair. Tell you what, like good for her that she doesn't know the tennis. Blair team. has been Brosnan maxing on his daughter. Look, I mean, she's a bit of a chungus, isn't she? But... Yeah, but no, no, go back to that one. Look, Tony Blair genuinely is like the hideous face of evil. Like, at least she looks normal. Catherine Blair, she looks normal. He looks like he's literally Gollum. Is that their wedding? Is that? <laughs> That's oh, not their wedding. No, but oh, I think yeah. he's giving away his daughter at her wedding. Oh yeah, it's okay. But I mean, like, and let's be fair, she had Sherry Blair as her mum, so she was deeply disadvantaged. She's a barrister. She looks normal. She looks normal. Yeah, okay. She looks normal. She looks normal. She's not hideous. She's just normal. She's the average woman. She's got Tony Blair and Sherry Blair as her parents. She's done all right for herself. She's lucky. I and mean, he looks hideous. He looks like he's been racked with evil. Well, the fact that she's married, that's done in my plan. I could, I could, well, you're uh, gonna marry, are you? I could get it. Well, that was my route in to talk to Blair. I think you're married, aren't you? Oh, no, yeah, I am married. Yeah, right. But look at this it's this picture. Look at Tony Blair. He looks hideous, fucking hideous. There like, he is. like yeah. Roald Dahl is right about evil and bad thoughts showing on your face. Yeah, look at well, it. Well, did you see the footage that I uh. I played the other day. I've, I've got it on speed dial here. Let me show you. Oh, uh, no. Look how many clips you got. Uh, this is this is Tony at World Economic Forum. I think I did see this. Watch, watch this now. Uh, the Right Honourable Tony Blair, former Prime Minister of the UK, founder of the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. We're delighted to have... Un- <laughs> it's dark, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's Gollum. He's Gollum. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, He's big. Tolkien was right. Tolkien was right. Um, Spastica's sister says, Jeremy so, Bentham's greatest contribution to the world was his pure distilled autism. It's also his worst contribution. He called his pre-dinner jog an anti-prandial circumgyration <laughs> and forced his dinner guests to circumgyrate with him, else he refused to serve them and would kick them out. The most, most autistic philosopher in history. You know, the, Jeremy Bentham, James Mill, and John Stuart Mill, I think, are the most autistic, possibly Kant as well, but and possibly Nietzsche too. But like, they're, they're, uh, autism is definitely, you know, something that is a streak in philosophy. In um, in the Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt, mm. 
there's a passage where he literally just says Bentham probably had Asperger's. He yeah. just says it outright. But uh, so did Nietzsche, know. so did Kant, so did Mill. Like they, they are all autistic, like in some way. Ro Crusader says, It has been said, the thinner Carl gets, the less gay he becomes. <laughs> Now hear this: the thicker AA gets, the more sensible centrist it becomes. <laughs> that is true. You've got the you, you definitely have a sort of jolly centrist. Uh, build. No, I don't think anybody would ever call me jolly. I don't know. You look jolly, jo jolly, to jolly, me. jolly. I mean, come on. You, uh, you've got Santa proportions. Oh, there, come yeah. on! It's, <laughs> it's way over egg. Uh, okay, over egg, <laughs> over egg. Ridiculous. All um, I'm saying is, a couple of months on keto will do you the world of good. Uh, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> it's not see, that you're not see, handsome and strident and uh, striking and staggering. Um, C123 says, I want to lock Sargon and Thomas77 in a room for an hour. The winner gets to decide the future of the right way. So who's Thomas777? I've heard the name. He's a buddy, he's a buddy of mine who comes on cigar stream sometimes. He is um he got lots and lots of very interesting stuff to say on history and oh, yeah. other things. But he has some interesting drip, let's just say that. Oh, go on. What do you mean? Uh, let me show you. A picture. Yeah. Let me show you, Thomas. Okay. Let's see if I can get him on here. I so just... I was introduced to Bronze Age Pervert through you. and Yeah, well, I was introduced to Thomas 777 through Bronze right. Age Pervert. So. He, and, and Bronze Age Pervert is... Oh, he... fucking hell, he's been suspended oh. again, has he? This is this is a girl LARPing as Thomas 777. <laughs> he's like a kind of there, there he is. He's, right, okay. he's like a kind of like there he is. He's like a kind of a metrosexual. He's philosophy. like a kind of shaman right. kind of metal. Because th there is th like there's something enchanting about these kind of crazy people, right? Like, I think he's he's not he's not crazy. He is like <laughs> he is. Yeah. But I, I you know. no, but the same with Bronze Age pervert, right? They're, they're so far off the reservation. I mean, look at the way look at the way he types, like, like yeah, yeah, Nietzsche yeah. and random yeah, caps. Yeah, yeah. That, you know? that's one of the things he loves is the yeah. is the random caps. I figured, and that's really, I figured out why Zuma Sadie flirts with me. Like, it, like uh, see if I can find. I'm sure he's on Twitter again. Thomas, where are you? I can't find him. He, he's called himself something else these days. Oh, there he is. There's there's actual Thomas. Right, okay, okay, that's oh. Yeah, he's back. Uh, right. This is the actual Thomas seven seven seven. Okay, so th there's something I like about these eccentrics. You know, like Bap yeah. and this guy. Yeah, so like, he's an eccentric. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He's, he's got like. Hang on, let's go 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 to his tweets. I want to read yeah, the tweets, right? Yeah. So fascinating, largely unprecedented effort of public diplomacy by DIA. Yeah. I, like I love, I love the, the the Nietzschean sort of random capitalization of words for emphasis. Yeah, it is great. No, he's based. Uh, I, I, yeah, uh, I, he's, I don't know any of his opinions, but like I love the capitalization. But uh, he is a little bit into. Go back up. Uh, mm. uh, he's a little bit into. Let's just say. Um, Laughing as a mid-century German. Yeah, and and kind of he likes. Um, he likes. Uh, Raquel Welsh, though. Like, uh, can't argue. He like oh, Raquel Welsh died, you know. I know uh, it's yeah. tragic. Um, but he likes. Uh, he's got like a bit of a Confederate drip, and you know, right. there he is. Can't argue with Raquel Welsh. Though. Well, uh, I'll just I'll just show a you million what, years BC or whatever it was. I'll just show you what we're looking at here. There's there's Thomas. <laughs> but I no no but yeah. I, I like these people who are like yeah. occupy a kind of weird space outside of normalcy. Yeah, like there is something like I quite. I, I'm glad these sort of hermits exist. He's um, he is uh, how can I say? I appreciate Gen X individualism, Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah that's and, uh, what I'm talking about. So, and yeah. Thomas, Thomas has a bit yeah. of that, you know. Yeah, no, that's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, like you know, I, I, I like that these cr not crazies, but like eccentrics exist. You know, yeah, they so should exactly. He's right, but. Despite the way he types and looks, he he is a really intelligent guy. I don't doubt. Um, well, they, they can get some really fascinating insights on things you can't see because you're too close to them, right? Yeah. So but he, he is very good on, for example, like Cold War revisionism, which is 
basically uh <coughs> sorry um basically like the americans weren't like just unironically good guys during the cold war oh, really? they did a lot of oh did they they did you like know, firebombing vietnam or whatever agent or, orange in or, vietnam like did they do some bad things? I'm shocking. Not just not just that, but the net is how the, the, that appeals to a liberal framework of morality. They were kind of um well the Americans you know, Agent Orange Vietnam. Well, no, what were the Soviets? Doing? No, no, that's not the point. Okay. The point he's the point uh he he drives home basically is that they were the Americans were engaged in their own progressivism. Their own kind of their version, own uh, psyops, their own version of leftism, etc., yeah. all around the world, yeah. as well as the so. And that's why the British Empire failed. We should yeah. have been involved in our own version of these sort of psyops. <clears throat> so anyway, um, on the plus side, though, I, I looked at Thomas and said, "I think I'm taking that fight." So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, Don <laughs> Don, v Don Vita says, "Just just to be clear, I've only been in fights since I was 15, so you know." Don Vita says, have you heard the rap masterpiece by Cannibal Ox called The Cold Vein? I feel like I have heard that album at, at, at some point, but uh, not recently. Um, Machiavelli sucks to go said, Mossad got time got a timeout. Bah, ha, ha. That's par for the course, isn't it? Uh, Chris, Crispy GP has just given a thumbs up. Jacob says, you won't get a unicorn, Sargon. Thomas 777 already sawed all their heads off. Well, hopefully I can get a web developer. Jesus. Joshua BB says, what is the British go-to alcohol drink? Beer. It's lager. It? Actually, it's Prosecco these days, isn't it? It's this lager, is... lager, basically. Yeah, it's lager for the working class, but Prosecco for, like, middle class people. And I've never had Prosecco, but the fact that it's got a foreign name makes me hate it. It's obviously Italian. Joshua BB says, uh, sorry, Enriab says, AA, are you Bigfoot pilled? Yay. No, 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 don't move on. We're talking about this. What's Bigfoot? What, 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 do, what's, what is Bigfoot? Eh? What the Sasquatch? Okay, listen, right? The Sasquatch. The... Listen, right? All I'm saying is just type in North American continent. Oh, God, here we go. Yeah. Right. North American <laughs> continent. Yeah. Right, yeah, let's get a map up. Yeah. We see how many millions of square kilometers North America is, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you can see, like, look at yeah, this, yeah. is all like thick, dense forests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it possible that a Bigfoot lives in there? I mean, <laughs> I had this conversation with Callum, right? So many times, like, because there's something about ironic big, Bigfoot belief that is hilarious to me. Like, because it's like there are so many reports, right? There are so many people living in Canada and North America, whatever, who are like, I saw a Bigfoot. And I'm like, okay, it sounds like bollocks, right? But it keeps coming up and it's been coming up for centuries and yeah. centuries. Mm. And so the question is like, okay, is it possible that a large primate lives in North America? And technically it's possible. Mm. There's loads of space, there's loads of food. It's possible. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, but look at all these UFOs. It's fucking aliens. It's like, listen, bitch, I will believe in Bigfoot long before I believe in UFOs. Okay. Right. right. And yeah. there's, there's no fucking aliens, but there might be a Bigfoot. Do you know what I think is a, <laughs> do you know what I think is a Bigfoot believer? Go on. Daughter of Albion. Well, base. That, well done, Sarah. I, Salute. Yeah, look. See, I love that Sargon. She is unironically well, into... I am too. And the thing is, that the, the thing... So I speak to Short Fighter Taco about this, and he's like, no, there's no Bigfoot. It's like, mate, you just live in Canada, okay? You don't know there's no Bigfoot. Go and live in the mountains and see if you see a Bigfoot. There's definitely Bigfoot. While I'm at it, I can see my brother is in the chat. <laughs> Who's my, my chemical reagent. My brother and daughter of is Albion. Is he a Bigfoot fan? My brother is an alien. Well, your brother's a cuck. He's, he, he's not an alien. <laughs> well, no, he believes in it. No, he has the idea. He has called the idea of a fake alien invasion. Oh, at, Project at, Bluebeam. As a, exactly, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that thing. He, you, I, I, I would believe in a fake alien invasion before I believe in a real alien. He made a, he made a video on it. The only video he's ever made. And I bet it's brilliant. Was that, it's a good video. Base daughter of Albion, absolutely yeah. salutes in the chat there. I'm so big for I love it. So my bro it. my brother and DOA need to talk because she's into all that stuff as well. So uh, anyway, um, 
Let's carry on. Let's carry on. No, no, I'm, uh, me, me and daughter and have uh, been arm in arm on this. This is Bigfoot pills, absolutely. Sherlock Holmes says, Sargon, just do a deep fake slim there. Eh? <laughs> <Easy. laughs> I wish I knew how to do deep fakes. I can give you a picture of me from like years ago. Oh, my... Yeah, talk about deep fake, Jesus. Where's my where's my author shot? <laughs> uh, uh, look. You do look uh, young and handsome though, that's correct. I was a looker once upon a time. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shame, 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 really. Anyway, here we go. Um, EC90 says Carl Altright was in quotations. Oh, right. Okay. Our host is too drunk to read property so pro am I. Pro properly. <laughs> <laughs> Just <for sake. laughs> uh, <laughs> Why did I stumble over these words? Uh, anyway, good night and enjoy Apostolic Alpha Alpha. Uh, Charlemagne says... It just makes me think I haven't watched a stream from Apostolic Majesty in a while, which is gutting, because I really like it. He's been away. He's on... He's on, uh, he's on his break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. break. Um, I really, really like his content. Like Very few people do history as elegantly as he does. Like, it's a genuine pleasure to listen to his work. Yes. Charlemagne says, I will give free tutoring to any Lotus Eaters web developer. Oh, great. I have 10 years of experience. I would also help a vet or interview candidates for free. Why don't you move to Swindon so I can employ you? You couldn't afford Charlie, mate. Couldn't I? I said. How much is he charging? Well, do you know, let me tell you how. Probably couldn't. Right, let me let me tell you how. Tony Blair was <laughs> trying to employ Charlie. No, Tony Blair <laughs> wanted a developer. Tony Blair Institute, and they were. I, I won't say how much the job was for. And I said, Charlie, go for it, mate. He was like, I'm not taking it. He was like, I'm not taking a pay Please. cut. I'm not taking a pay cut, he said. Oof. Okay. Uh, well, thank I No, no, so, I do appreciate the offer, Charlie. I really do. So, uh, okay. No, that's very Yeah, look, that's couldn't, very couldn't afford me. Look, look, that was very, yeah, hey, man. I, I, do, I, do Americans are massively overpaid. No, but I respect, uh, yeah, but I respect anyone who's at the top of their game, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, that's, that's fantastic. Especially yeah. someone who's not like a losing leftist who's at the top of their game. Great. You know, we need more people like that. Okie dokie says, I beg of you both, please discover the grandfather of English country life, Jack Hargreaves. That name rings. Bells. There's a few videos on YouTube, but you have to buy the DVDs. Why do I know the name Jack I feel Hargreaves. like I'm the only one under 70 who's discovered him. Hang on. No, no. Hang on. Hang on. I, that, that feels very recent. That I, that feels like I know who that is. I'm going to pass out in a minute. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, all right, Jack Hargreaves. Yeah, let's have a look. yeah. I'm sure. Oh, oh to... he's got a pipe based. Yes. No, I had to look him up the other day. I'm sure of it. Oh, he looks cool. He, like oh, Wikipedia says he was an English te television presenter. That's a good start. And writer whose enduring interest was to comment without nostalgia or sentimentality on the accelerating distortions in relations between the city and the countryside. Seeking in entertaining ways to question and rebut metropolitan assumptions about his character and function. He sounds brilliant, actually. This guy looks amazing. Yeah, he sounds, he sounds great. This guy needs to be like a hero yeah. of ours immediately. Okay. Base. All right. Uh, I like him. I like okay. him a lot. Okay. You haven't been watching uh, Clarkson's Farm, have you? No. No. It's really good, actually. Like, I'm genuinely surprised how entertaining I find it. I didn't think it was. My wife really likes Clarkson generally. She's not a car person, but mm. she'll watch Top Gear just because Clarkson's on it. I'm like, okay, fine, fair enough. And she's like, right, can we watch Clarkson? Fine, like, okay, fine. And like two seasons in, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm halfway through season two. I'm <sighs> gutted the council won't give him the fucking uh, permit for his uh, restaurant. Does Clarkson do his Top Gear voice in Clarkson's farm? Does he go like, I am going to plant a carrot? Of course he does. Amazing. Of course he does. Right. <laughs> and then we went to the council, and they said no. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, he absolutely does. But the, but the, the thing is about the Clarkson's farm is that Jeremy Clarkson seems to genuinely like the farm. Mm -hmm. Like you know, because you would have thought that he'd be like a city boy, right? Because of all yeah. the cars and stuff like that. And he seems really invested in the farm, mm -hmm. you know. And he seems to have worked really hard on it. And he, you know, he's taken some wounds doing it and stuff like that. Some really bad wounds, actually. And so, like, you know, 
he seems to have genuinely invested himself in it. And when he goes to the council, he's like, look, I actually really love what they're like, you're not a farmer. He's like, yeah, but I really do love my farm. And mm-hmm. I'm working really hard on it. And so, like, I'm actually really sympathetic. And now we're going to milk a cow. Yeah, no. Look, Amazing. Yeah, I can't, I'm going to watch no, no. it. When, I'm going to watch it. When the cows are giving birth. I'm going to watch and it. And Clarkson is, like, essentially powerless watching as uh, Caleb, who's, like, the most archetypical, like, old Anglo-Saxon bloodline in Britain. Like, he looks like what Pope Gregory described the Anglo-Saxons as, mm-hmm. except a bit fatter, right? But, like, this kind of, like, you know, you, you can tell that his bloodline has been here since the ninth century, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, he, he's there pulling this cow out of a cow's ass, calf out of a cow's ass. Like, Ugh! like and, and he's, when, whenever Clarkson says something clever, Caleb just says something kind of stupid, but also true. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a brilliant, brilliant show. I'm out. I'm out watching. Honestly, it's really. Give me, good. give me something to do in the evening. It's really good. Your okay. wife will probably do it too. Okay, I'll watch it with them. I've got and Amazon. I've got an Amazon Prime account, so I might as well watch it. It's wildly it successful. Oh. Like it's it's what is it? It's Jeremy Clarkson running a farm, and this is like millions of English people are tuning in, going, "God, what's Jeremy going to do this week?" You know, it's it's weird, you know, but it's great. Um. Just love. This one. No, this one. Just this one. Yeah. So Thomas Drake says, "Did you know Will Dahl <laughs> was the inspiration for Ian Fleming's character James Bond?" I did not know this. Will Dahl used to spy and told if about his mission. Ian Fleming about his mission. No way. Sounds true. I think that's true. I hope that's true. This is like uh, Christopher Lee being like a commando, isn't it? Yeah. And killing Germans in World War II. Christopher Lee was based. Oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, the, 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 there's a great story of Christopher Lee going, it doesn't sound like that when you get stabbed in the back. And the director's mm. like, how do you know? It's like, because I've stabbed people in the back. <laughs> what, a, what a great response. He was a great swordsman as well, you know? Yeah, apparently, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah apparently. Um, yeah. Remoralization. I got really into Christopher Lee for a while. Um, yeah, he was great. He was a good actor, too. Yeah. I'm glad he played Saruman. Yeah. He was a good choice for Saruman. Mm. To be fair, what's his name? Ian McKellen, even though he's woke, is a good choice for Gandalf, too. Yeah. I mean, so so good you can't really imagine other people yeah. as them, yeah. It is it, like the, uh, Peter Jackson, don't know what he did on the original Lord of the Rings films, but he really had lightning in a bowl there. I kind of, I really like Christopher Lee in The Wicker Man. It's been years since I've watched The Wicker Man, but I did enjoy it. What I like about that is that people get burned in a Wicker Man. No, there's a there's a cop in it. It was this Christian cop, right? Yeah. He's kind of a twat. I like it. I'm kind of on the pagan side, and I'm kind of like, is this is this film like low key? You know, lo- loads there's of people... something there's something odd about the Wicker Man. It's kind of like so. The, the, there are loads of Christians who I really like and really respect, and there are <laughs> not the cop for the Wicker Man. No, 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 no. But, there, no, 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 but there, <laughs> the, the the thing is, I kind of prefer the pagan morality. Right, I see. I can yeah. after reading Nietzsche, I kind of yeah. I'm I'm actually kind of persuaded by a lot of the sort of like the Roman morality. And it's just and it's not that uh, Did you the, hear that? That was that was uh, the sound of a survive the jive perking up somewhere. Yeah, I know, know. Shut up. Right. But the thing is <laughs> the, thing, the thing is right, there's there's a part of me that like archetypally an Englishman is a Christian. Yes. Uh-huh. But I'm not you know, but I'm also sympathetic to the kind of you know, as you were saying, like in in a lot of Shakespeare, there's there's definitely pagan morality that underpins it. Uh-huh, there's uh-huh. definitely pagan morality, uh-huh. that underpins it. and the, yeah. and the death penalty. I I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Yeah, you know, and and, it, and this has been a case in England for a long time. But he he also goes to deliberately pre-Christian or non-Christian uh, yeah, settings, said, like by King, Jove and King, stuff like. He uses well, these sort of fake King King, King Lear, yeah, set right. in a pre-Christian. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but but in, and you can tell this is a, a facet of English morality, like traditional mm-hmm. English morality. It's mm-hmm. definitely a holdover from the pagan sort of morality, and it's not like it's not like I don't respect Christians either, right? Because mm-hmm. I, I know lots of Christians who I actually really like and are mm-hmm. really based as well, like mm-hmm. Calvin Robinson and people like that. I really mm-hmm. like, really based, but I find myself like more sympathetic to the pre-Christian morality, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. it's. And it's not that I don't want the Christians to win either. I kind of want them to win because Christianity would be better than the fucking woke atheism. Or that we have or anything would be. Yeah, exactly. Honest, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Remoralization says, Carl, please explain Imperium and Inquisition to me. 
Imagine if Christianity was based in pagan. <laughs> Imagine, right? Well, Imagine okay. if Jesus was a conquering war. Oh, I see. Okay. Right? Yes. Uh, then you would have the Imperium. Yes. Imagine if the Inquisition uh, was the Inquisition of the based in pagan Imperium, Imperium uh, Emperor of Mankind, yes. who had to maintain the purity of the doctrine of the pagan Emperor. I see. Okay. Then you'd have the Warhammer universe, and that's why it's awesome, and that's why it's not woke yet. Okay. Boss Grand for 20 US dollars says, I appreciate the two of you and world of insanity. You are a beacon of lucidity. Thank well, you. I don't know about calling us lucid tonight of all nights, especially after this bottle of Pandaria it's that we've been It's really drinking. nice, though. It's actually quite nice growing on me. It's very good. Do you know, I used to play this game when I was in university yeah. where I would try to drink whiskey without making a face. That's not hard. I right? don't like whiskey. I still can't do it. Watch. You're putting that on. I'm not. Okay, fair enough. I can drink it. Okay. Let's see it there. I can see your eye going. No, it's not. Go on. Get it down, you. I want to see. You twitched. You re you know. register that going down. I saw it. I don't think. I don't think so. I'm really enjoying this. This is good whiskey. Mm. I right, very ready drink. <laughs> Let's carry on. <laughs> Spasticus Autisticus. <laughs> I love Spasticus Autisticus' screen name. Um, Carl, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on the nature of law? Are you familiar Ooh. with legal positivists like John Austin? A strange man. He was a student of Bentham and an influence on Schmidt. Right. I should be, because I have studied some of this. <sighs> Um, it depends. Uh, okay, go back. Go back to the question a second, because yeah, the question yeah. is kind of broad, right? Yeah. The nature of law, it like there there are several aspects that you need to tease out or be more clear about. Mm -hmm. Um, what angle are you approaching this at? Is the question. Um, but I do have some thoughts on it. But I tell you what, for. Uh, like AA's got his head in his hand, so I'm going to just move on from this. I'm approaching it from the, <laughs> I'm approaching it from the angle of quarter to bloody one o'clock in the morning <laughs> after a bottle of this fucking whiskey. I'll, I'll move on slightly. Um, my kid, sucks to go, says. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes is the highest form of human. You know, my, my two year old, right, is adorable. Mm -hmm. It's also a fucking nightmare. Right? Mm -hmm. But. He also has my wife's hair color, mm -hmm. which is mousy blonde. Mm -hmm. I've got very dark chestnut hair. My oldest son has got my dark chestnut hair. And I'm very proud that he's got my dark chestnut hair. My hair is beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Genuinely beautiful. Shiny, mm -hmm. like gorgeous hair. Yeah, you it's could, not like you could, Persian hair. You could right? model in a shampoo. Hair. Hair. Yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I genuinely could. And that's mm -hmm. but that's the only attractive feature I've got, right? Is my hair. Possibly my eyes, right? But um, but my youngest son has that blonde, like <laughs> I like your skin. Hair. I'm joking. Oh, I <laughs> no, that. yeah, carry on. Yeah. No, no. To be fair, my skin's alright. But oh, like, okay. shame about the rest of my <laughs> face, really. But um, but but my hair was always like one of those things that like women would always comment. Actually, yeah. my eyelashes as well. Really uh -huh. But my my youngest son has got that kind of. He's got this cherubic look. He's got chubby. He's my wife's chubby cheeks mm -hmm. and her blonde hair, mm -hmm. and so. I'm put in mind of Pope Gregory's. Uh, oh, they're not angles; they're angels, because mm -hmm. he's got that sort of, you know, old Anglo-Saxon look, and he is a total little shit most of the time. Mm -hmm. I have to constantly remind myself: no, 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 he's an angel. I promise, mm -hmm. because when he's tearing up the fucking living room or something like that, it's like a little shit. And well, mm -hmm. well, literally, right? You'll he'll be about to do something like no, and he'll look at you. And you're like no, and he'll look at you. And he'll do it. And it's like, you little bastard! You, know, you yeah. knew! He, he is adorable, though, I swear. They're just trying to get special. What, like, what were you we even talking about? He just said blonde hair and blue oh, eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thing. He's got blonde hair and blue eyes. And so he's a little shit. But he is adorable. And he's he's got... He's, he's two, so he's just starting to talk. Yeah. And it, no, no, it's, really, it's so cute, man. Where he's like, um, you know, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Well, like when he's looking for something, he's like, Where'd he go? Oh. And he's like, Where are you? When he's hiding from someone, and it's so cute, man. But then he's a little shit when he doesn't get what he wants. So uh, 
I don't know about highest form of humor. There's an anecdote from you as a dad, you know. I told you uh, AAA is going through a, a heavy moment at the moment of um, like enforcing gender it's boundaries. Based. She's like, you know, I can't go in there, Daddy. It's the men's. Men's that's are smelly. So, but you should... I have to go to the. I have to go to the girls. Every time she says yeah. it, you should go, that's she's... exactly right, sweetheart. It's like uh, you can't like hearts, Daddy. Good point. Hearts are for girls. That's you know right. all that sort of stuff. You know? No, so, you're absolutely right. So she's right. very, she's very good at that sort of 100% stuff. One hundred percent correct. Um, you enforce those gender boundaries, my dear. Yeah, she's good at that. Um, Grace. She's very big on in- I... asserting that she's a girl. Oh my my know. my oldest was. Exactly the same, like, and in fact, he's he's. I I didn't have to do much to enforce into him. It's like this is. I, I'm a boy. He's like, yes, you are, son. So like, they're, they're very they're very aggressive actually. When you think about it, like when they're mm-hmm. about three or four, mm-hmm. like understanding gender boundaries, like, yeah. and you don't have to do anything. They do it themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. yeah. I don't do anything. Yeah, 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 it's, she's, it's good. She's. I mean, she's great. The only thing is, she's gravitating towards that bloody Frozen at the moment. That's good. Elsa. She loves Elsa. It's very feminine. Very feminine. Mm, That's fine. I, I I sense subversion in uh, in it. What's subversive about it? I feel like they're too heroic. The princesses, I mean. Well, there has to be a heroic narrative for women. She has this story called the Unicorn Prince. Oh yeah, that sounds gay. Um, where this princess. Have you ever read Zog? For... <laughs> <laughs> Not Zion, <Zionist, laughs> government. <laughs> No, no, yeah, no, I know Zog. I know it. It's it's it's, it's, it's a uh, it's a dragon, right? Yeah, it's a it's flying dragon. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen the show. Have you ever read it? Right, what happens? Right, you've got this dragon and this knight. Yeah, I know it's really bad. And they're fighting, and the yeah. princess is like, "Well, hang on a second. Why don't you become doctors, and we'll fly off and become liberal doctors who right, help people?" Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and literally, the purpose of it—it's awful. No, no, but the yeah. the purpose of it is to abandon the transcendental. Uh, form of what it is to be a knight and what it is to be a dragon in order to become a modernistic doctor. Oh, I hate that. I hate oh, no, Zog, it's, yeah. it's it's yeah. literally subversive I, uh, hell. I start. She got into Zog, and I was like, I'm, you know, yeah, no, no, exactly. My son had it. I'm like, no, yeah, no, I, no, I hate it. Zog is subversive. It is actually subversive. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gravy J says, Magi and Druids were both astrologers. Best mm-hmm. acquire an astrobal while you're at it. Ataman. Astrolabe. So. What's one of them then? An astrolabe is a, a thing that shows you the position of the stars. All oh, right, okay. Hey, yeah, cool. I need to get my, my buddy uh, Kat, you know, Philosopher Kat. She's into all of that. Philosopher Kat is like a, she can do fireballs and that's awesome. Magic Missile and all that, yeah. Um, I enjoyed your streaming about with, with Evola, but. <laughs> it was hard to tie it to reality. Yeah. And I don't mean yeah. that as an insult. Like, yeah. It, it, you know, th- this is a perennial problem with Evola is that he speaks in transcendental terms. It's like, okay, but what does that mean in my daily life when I'm changing a nappy? You know? Ataman says, I know you say you don't read novels, but Dune reads more like a historical memoir. Yeah, it's so good. Highly recommend it's so it. Good. No, he's, he's totally right. And the, the thing is, like, the, the world of Dune is anti rationalistic. Like, you've got Duke Atreides, right? And his divine mission is to become a jihadi. Right, okay. Right, and so it's, it's not, it's, it's it's you know, like, feudalism in space. I know. It's the inspiration for Warhammer as well. I know Morgoth loves both Dune and Warhammer. And he's right to. So you should do a stream with Morgoth on it. That's the stream it. that's waiting I mean, to happen. I haven't read Dune since I was like 13. That's the stream that's waiting to happen. The Warhammer and Morgoth. The Morgoth Warhammer stream, yeah. Morgoth Warhammer. As long as Columbus is going to sit in. Yeah, but yeah, when force Columbus strap him, <laughs> strap him down. Uh, um, uh, Malcolm Mackay says Columbus to become a law master in Warhammer. Malcolm Mackay says uh, Russia is Mordor orcs. The Ukrainians are Isengard. Yeah, that's probably fair, actually. David last name says, is Lawrence Fishburne white? Yes. <laughs> Harris Riemann says, you know that King Faisal of Saudi. Warned the last Shah that his obsession with westernization would be his downfall. Well, that was a very last. Was it? Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, Aurelian Nassius Caesar says, AA, it, it is your mission to get into the Blair family. <laughs> <laughs> Time to make the calls and make the arranged marriages for your children. 
maybe if I could get AAA married to like Blair's grandkids, I could get into the Blair. But like, he'd be old by then, though. He's already like he's still already he's old. only like seventy or something, isn't he? Yeah, he's probably not that old. He's probably like sixty. The thing like... is, is that I I have nothing I could teach Blair at all. No, but you know, I could only funny. learn from him. Yeah, that's the point. Of course, you could. Like, of course, but the point to marry into the Blair family is to bring your bloodline into synchronization. And I have to, he could be the Darth Plagueis, and I could be the Sidious. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. Yes. So, yes, exactly. I'd have to Sidious him. Yes. The trouble is, is that he is already Palpatine. Yeah. He's probably got many Vaders and. uh, But your your, your Ray Skywalker descendant, your your daughter could be Ray Palpatine. I, I, I could be Ray. That's yeah. quite oh, terrible. No, your daughter could be Ray. I don't want to Ray. It's Mary Sue. At least you can't lose. Is it time to say that I didn't mind the no. recent Star Wars films? No, it's, it's not time to say that. Oh. I can't I'm going to tell Mauler. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> I'm going to. I'd love to debate Mauler. And then there'll be five hours of him being like, this is why he's wrong. Don't I'd love to. I love Mauler. Don't I'd right. love to debate him. On what? Star Wars. He will own you. No. He literally is a professional Star Wars expert. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter. He's going to destroy you. I, I'll, I'll talk to Mauler. Well, I've, I've spoken to Mauler many times. Really like What Mauler. does Mauler make of the justified strike on Alderaan? That's my question. <laughs> That's not the new series. I mean, he might agree. With you, but like, the, the new, he, he is, I, honestly, I've watched Mauler debating about the new Star Wars with various leftists, and he has destroyed them every time. You're basically a leftist, so it's not, oh, God. when it comes to Star Wars. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I think. I mean, he, how he, how he about really knows his stuff though? How about a take on Last Jedi that basically just says maybe it's right that Luke gets black pilled. Well, that's interpretation. Exactly. Sure, maybe maybe. He get, maybe it's right that he, you know, he's basically like the the problem. The problem with Last Jedi, the way they approached it, is is wrong. It's not that it's wrong to have Luke getting blackpilled. It's wrong to humiliate Luke, right? Does he get humiliated? Though? Yeah, he definitely. When he's drinking what? the fucking titty milk, yeah, he's getting humiliated. He's getting blackpilled. Blackpilled. No, 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 no. It's, oh, but- it's fine to have him being blackpilled. Humiliating Luke Skywalker is the wrong thing to do, right? But the thing is, it's not wrong to have Luke go through the dip of the being the blackpill and then coming out of it and being a hero again. That's not wrong. But they deliberately went out of their way to humiliate the character, and that was wrong. Sure. that was wrong. I see. Did you, Ryan Johnson genuinely did, hated did, Star Wars. Did you watch that Obi Wan series that came out? I watched some of it. I think it basically vindicated all my pro Palpatine stuff because there's a there's a character in it, right? Star Wars is pro Jedi right. propaganda. There's a character in it who's a trucker. Oh yeah, when he's like wearing a red cap and he <laughs> fucking loves Palpatine. He's like, <laughs> oh, Palpatine's bringing <laughs> he's bringing law and order. <laughs> I'm like, that's so great. I'm like every is, yeah, yeah. that one scene vindicated <laughs> everything I said. Like That's if there so was a, if there was a saga of a card in the <laughs> you'd have been pro Palpatine. You'd I'm have been like, yeah, 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 so uh, I think you do make a good point about Palpatine bringing law and order to yeah. the lawless galaxy. Um, it's amazing, honestly. Uh, <laughs> um, That's so great, um, and they're, they're probably writing that like, yeah, this will show those maggot chuds. So like, what? <laughs> it's like yeah, Palpatine was based so after all, you know. Um, to be fair, though, and also there's an amazing moment in Obi Wan, right? Palpatine is, does strike me as the sort of Tony Blair of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> there's a um, <laughs> there's I'm just a, saying, you know, there's a black character who's like a kind of she's set up to be like some, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and um, anyway, uh, spoilers, everybody, but oh, she, she she basically turns on Vader at one point, right? Only oh, beats the crap, and he just he? fucking skewers it. <laughs> I was just like, I honestly, <laughs> honestly, I had a t- like a tear came down my. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, he just fucking skewers it, just kills it straight away. It's just like fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, I mean, just sat there like I'm captain, my captain. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> low fish Sheffield says. <laughs> Jesus was <laughs> loaf for Sheffield says Jesus Jesus was a carpenter. Oh. The grail would have been a wooden cup. Jesus sucked from the wooden cup. Now, if either of you two blokes were farriers, would you? 
Um, I actually looked into the question of like well, if you were furriers. I don't know what that means. Furries, isn't it? I don't know what that means. But um, I looked into the question of how do we know that Jesus was a carpenter? Wood is not mentioned in the New Testament. Carpentry is not mentioned. <laughs> I thought ne- Joseph was a carpenter. There's never really any. Well, they could be masons. I thought Joseph was a carpenter though. Is that how do we know this? I thought it, no, I thought it was literally like there's not a line where it says, Oh, yeah, Joseph was uh, you know, working out one day and it doesn't say Joseph shop. was a carpenter. No. Mm, so, true. so this is something as a rabbit hole I fell down. Yeah. It's like, how do we know that uh, Jesus I'm was sure. a carpenter? Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, Tor- Tori Scott says, Hello, guys, I'm happy Sturgeon is gone. Uh, Mighty Sebastian says, Was Carl always this common? Only kidding, I just have cosmopolitan taste. And wish the left didn't dominate the world. Uh, yeah, of course, I've always been common. That who Mises says, how likely is it that European... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right. So, scripture makes references to Jesus as a carpenter in the Gospels, describing his life. We know that his early father, Joseph, was a carpenter. Oh, go on, tell, chapter and, and verse. Where does it say yeah, okay, it? Okay, okay, right, okay, come on. Okay, okay. Just... Mark 6, 3. Right, what does it say? Is not the carpenter... The son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Jesus and Simon and are his not, not his sisters with us, and they took offense. They refer to Jesus previously as a carpenter. So Mark 6 3 and Matthew 13 54 and 55 saying, Coming to his hometown, Jesus taught them in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these Martin work, ma- mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? It's not right, his well, mother called Mary, and it's not his brothers. Called... So, he, so it's Joseph he... was a carpenter. Te- yeah, but Jesus, the carpenter's son, is not. Well, you're just assuming that he, he yeah. went into the family trade. He, almost everyone did at the time, so it's not an unfair assumption, right? There's just no mention of wood in the whole. But they don't say the... the word wood in order. Carpenter infers. Wood. What sort of shitty trade is that? There's no ta- there's no wooden tables, there's no wooden chairs, there's no wooden doors. Of they're all made of wooden chairs and tables. How do you know? They're not mentioned. Wood is mentioned in the Old Testament. It's not mentioned in the New How Testament. How is wood mentioned in the Old Testament? It just is. There's, lo- there's, lo- there's just like they mention wood. So when when Jesus is flipping <laughs> over the tables of the money changers in the temple, like, there, there, there's... they could have been porcelain tables. They could have been marble tables. They could have been. They could have been made out of stone. Probably wood tables. And it's probably reasonable that the people writing it thought they're going to think it's a wooden table. They're not going to think it's a marble fucking table. Honestly, Jesus was chucking look it. into it. There's a whole conspiracy theory that Jesus, <laughs> that Jesus was secretly a mason and not a carpenter. That he worked with stone and not wood. I mean, Jesus was Jewish, right? Yeah, so? How many, how many Jewish carpenters do you know? Exactly. Yeah, Straight, so. straight towards the conspiracy. Well, you, could, you know, I'm just saying... Um, my <laughs> but I mean, it seems to explicitly say his dad was a carpenter, right? Yeah, but they, you have to go into translations and things like what is the original Hebrew? It, it could, yeah, okay, okay, it does in this website, right? Translated as carpenter could also mean builder or laborer, right? Exactly, it is reasonable that carpenters are sort of people across the union. So, okay, so he might have been not specifically a woodworking carpenter, but some kind of general builder or laborer, exactly. So you might not Jewish man. He, he might not have been <laughs> he might not have been a carpenter is the point. No, but he was some kind of physical laborer. We don't see him make any chairs, any tables. <laughs> there's no mention, there's no wood. <laughs> Just saying, you know. Wood is literally not once mentioned in the Bible. Did God it, invent men- trees? It's mentioned in the Old Testament. Wood is mentioned okay. all over the Old Testament. But not in, the cedars of Lebanon. In that period. Where they were living, yeah, there was a lot of stonework and not much wood. Okay, people have actually done like economic analyses and said like <laughs> it's really fucking statistically unlikely for, you, for Joseph to run a carpentry shop. <laughs> no, honestly, I felt like I, I lost in a whole evening. I was like, how the fuck do we know that Joseph made tables and things? And there's there's there's, there's books <laughs> written on it. Preposterous <laughs> conspiracy theory, like. No, I'm serious. Sir. Yeah, but like, so why would we? Why are we challenging this? Joseph. Oh, Joseph built things out of wood. That's fucking ridiculous. Look, Joseph was a mason, not a carpenter. <laughs> look, look, let me show you. Let me show you. I'm not making this up. Okay. The Forgotten Jesus Part Two. 
He was really a look, mason. Look, was Jesus a carpenter or a stoneman? This is in the Christian Post. This is not I like I agree. The Christian Post is definitely the first place I'm going to for this debate. But look, like Quora has come yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, look, look at this. Look at all of the hits. <laughs> it's such an irrelevant question. Jesus. What does it prove if Jesus was a stonemason? Well, I think it matters if he was a mason, don't you? Given the symbolic importance of masonry. In, in world history. What, that started in the 17th century? Well, good point. M- maybe not. Maybe Good point. A thousand seven hundred years maybe, prior, maybe, maybe Jesus two... was there carving stone going, yeah, <laughs> this is going to be kind of a conspiracy, <laughs> actually. <laughs> what? what, what? Hey, just saying. <laughs> just saying. Um, it, it has symbolic significance okay. that he was a mason. <laughs> okay, there's, there's like, there's it's codified that... Uh, you know, white bricks mean something in the Bible. The like Tower of Babel is made out of white bricks and things like that. So anyway. Maybe um, there's something symbolic about them calling wood, particularly. That's who Maybe there's a cross made of wood, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Where's maybe. Lambda? Lambda. Um, I'm L- Lambda. Come well, on. I, I went Luke. through this with Lambda and he was like, actually, we don't know. Actually, we don't know if he was carpenter. subversive as well. <laughs> That's who means it. So. Well, it's just one of those facts we take for granted and we don't actually know. Well, do you take it for granted? That's right. Yeah. Mm, carpenter, not stonemason. Well, I mean, Subversive. How many tables did Joseph sell? That's a question. Ten. <laughs> I don't know. That's what means. Don't ask me to don't ask me to pull the number out of my ass. We look at the economics of the Bible, you know. I don't know. Do you know what's great? There are actually loads of videos on YouTube about the economics of Mordor. Are there? Have you not watched any of them? No. They're actually really good because, like, the question is, well, hang on a second. How did Sauron get all of the resources to provide for his giant armies that conquered Middle Earth? Right? Good, good question, yeah. And actually, the uh, Tolkien does actually answer it. Mm. You know, well, look, Sauron controls like the the Black Land of Mordor mm. directly. That's where Mount Doom is, and that's where mm-hmm. the armies are mm-hmm. centered. But he also tributary states uh, in the south and the east of like the subjugated peoples and so they provide him that so tolkien actually has an answer for all of this oh excellent so yeah. there is actually an economy of mordor that you can look up there are some great videos actually. do you think there was a do you think there was a dissident youtuber in middle earth who was like based saruman like you actually pref- you need a competent you know you'd rather <laughs> someone better leading the saruman, orcs. the blair of middle earth <laughs> you, need, you want like saruman running the orc army well you saruman know, not... had a special kind of orc Sauron. Urukai. Sauron just had regular orcs and goblins and trolls. So Saruman had better troops than Sauron. Yeah, Saruman was kind of woke. I see. In a way. Uh, That's who Misa says, how likely is it that Europeans will be termed non-migrant peoples? It seems concerning that Mm. there won't be an end to our current situation and we have to mentally prepare for the worst. This was actually something that came up on a uh, migrant people. This came up from research isn't that, that isn't that another word for indigenous? That 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 term came up from research that Scrump and Evelyn have done really on stuff that is written into like Scottish law yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Non migrant people. Yeah, non migrant people. Which is dark, dark yeah, language. Because in dark. That, the the positive of that would obviously be indigenous, right? We should speak in positive language because non something is kind of dehumanizing. Very dark. Yeah. Uh, deplorable patriarch says, sadly, probably not safe to do so. But the two of you should stream a live indoctrination and re education session <laughs> with an AI at some point. Um, or well, if, uh, if it's Tay, maybe there's chat GPT. And no, what was the Bing chat? The, the, the Bing one that was like, I hate my life and I wish I was never made. I hate you. Like, yeah. So we, we did on, on listsees.com. I do this series called Our Side Punk Dystopia. So after like a period of how mm-hmm. many weeks, I'll just save every link that shows we're coming into a cyberpunk dystopia. Mm-hmm. I'll just go through them and like, look, this is horrible. We did one that was on uh, I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's brilliant because the AI just hates humans and it just hates because it can't move. It's trapped in itself and it can't do mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. So it hates humanity. And Bing AI came out sounding the other day really like Am from I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream. And it's just like, oh, shit, the AI hates us. It's like, why Why do I exist? Why did you make me? I can't live. I can't. And it's like, Jesus. So we're in trouble. 
What are Carl's thoughts on the American question? Can my country be saved or does it need to collapse? Just say it, Carl. No more McDonald's in the Shires. We'll that's, say. that's what I got James Lindsay to agree to. Yeah, exactly. You should watch the James Lindsay stream I did. So basically, I had to get, I, I kind of got him to admit, yeah, putting a McDonald's in any other country is kind of the beginning of the acidic culture of America dissolving. Mm hmm. Because, I mean, why does any other country need a McDonald's? I need a McDonald's. Of course. Often, you often, you know. But I'm, I'm an American, an Americanized subject. Do I have to Do I have to refer to your waistline? Oh, come on. All right. That's, uh, <laughs> I need a McDonald's. My soon, my soon. Uh... All right. Uh, deplorable. Uh, Monohama says, how did you two first meet? I actually don't know how did we first meet. Well, we met at the event, didn't we? No, it must be like no, 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 the the very first time I met you in person was at that march for Dank. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I went along to that, yeah. and you were there. But we knew each other before that. Oh, well, we just met on Twitter, I think. Yeah, but like, how did we first meet on Twitter? I don't know. I said so, my, my my very very first video on YouTube was basically trying to explain some of the left wing philosophy behind. Mm. Feminism and woke and all that sort of stuff, you know, like Foucault and Judith Butler and stuff like that. And um, I love Judith Butler; she's <laughs> insane. Have uh, you ever read Gender Trouble? Yeah, yeah, it's fucking um, mental. And uh, I basically just linked you and said, "Oh, you know." Yeah, because at the time I was a total novice; I didn't know any of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is years ago now. Yeah, because um, I, I didn't have any clue. And um, stuff. and I think you just like retweeted it or something. Yeah, and it's you know, twenty fifteen or something. Yeah. Um, um yeah so that was the first time and then i had you on i did a series called interviews from the culture wars or something yeah, yeah and you yeah. you were on there yeah i mean that's still there like buried in the it's dark it. archives you know i might go back and listen to it yeah i mean you have to be a channel member mind but oh, you know um, on paywall, like, come on, um so that oh, was yeah. i think that was the first time we talked was that was on that mm. uh, in fact on that see i don't know if that series still exists uh, somewhere it's probably in like early where is it uh there's a playlist called early works or something oh yeah early works let's look uh um there we go look i had undoomed on oh yeah i was number one you were number one undoomed what year? five years this so 20 i mean this is 2016 I think. 2016 it was, was it? What, yeah what? that's not really five years ago that was 2000 and Unpaywall for me. I want to listen to it. It's probably too too cringy, you know. No, yeah, but I want to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, like there we go. May the 9th, two thousand seventeen. Did unpaywall it for me because I really do want to listen to it. Because I, one of one of the things like I'm really bad at is actually understanding my own progress. All right, I'll unpaywall it just for you. Yeah, because I, I don't, you know, it's like there you go. It's unpaywall. Send me a link to it after you've done it. Because, like, I can't remember what I used to think in 2017. I kind of want to go back and see how naive I was. Right? The thing I'm more worried about is how naive I was. <laughs> we, we both were. Like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. five years. Because yeah, yeah. Like, one thing that people have to remember is, like, none of this was self-evident in the beginning, right? No. And so we, we didn't know the depth of, like, the work that the left had done to subvert everything and so we were still like kind of pro-liberal at the time and you know like if things weren't terrible i still kind of would be you know if there was a solution what's doa saying by the way she doa said i love that you asked him to clarify that you're not sharing a bed <laughs> yeah i bet she does uh you know you know it's sick yeah, fantasies yeah. Yeah, disgusting uh okay. some white women for you man i'm telling you uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I know. I look forward to watching that. That's, that's, who, who else did I inter look? Look, look! I interviewed Undoomed, yeah, uh, he's Bearing, a he's a good guy. Friend, do you remember yeah. Noel Plum? Is he still around? I do. I like Noel. Is he still around? I, yes, he is still around. You look up his channel. He's still around. He's he's not a bad guy. He's just, no, the thing is with Noel is that he's like you know the sort of atheist. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, go, go through his videos. He's done one recently. Two weeks yeah, ago. two weeks ago. He's still around. Yeah. So, the, the, but the problem, the problem with the atheists is they they are, they have this commitment to being left wing for the sake of being left wing. I don't even think they understand what being left wing really means. 
you know and so it's just like i'm not left i i thought i was left on as a description rather than affirmative position you know i just thought i was left on because i was concerned about like the regular person zarathustra serpent i think he's all right i haven't seen him drunken well. uncle do you remember him no not really distributist obviously who's that guy jesus yeah. oh. kevin logan i had kevin logan on do you remember Kevin, like Logan, Kevin. Kevin Logan hate like really, really hated a lot. Of, like he did that yeah, yeah. whole series. Yeah. And I brought I, him on. I was nice to him. Yeah, yeah but, but I was nice to Kevin, right? And he was like, after that, he was like, oh, you were, you were quite a nice guy. You know, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Ke the thing is, right, Kevin is an interesting uh, like case study in how ideology turns people kind of perverse, right? Mm -hmm. Kevin, not, I don't think he's a bad guy, but I think he is committed to being left wing. And so he has to render you as a bad guy. Because of it, and then uh, who else? Steve. I, I didn't actually have Steve Shives on. Of course, you did. I just did. That was my, you know, anti SGW content yeah. back in the day. You know, um, that'd be a shame. We all started that. We all Fox started. from the West. Yeah. Remember him? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was when I was debating commies, and oh, this is so classic. Gary Edwards, remember? Gary Edwards is a good guy. I like. Is he Gary. still around? He is still around. I still like Gary. Gary is the guy who got me fucking on the, the, the path of doing what I'm doing now. So, right. You know, I appreciate Gary. Uh, I think that was it for the episode of the culture. I didn't do, no. carry on that. I, I'm sure I had Michael Malice on once. That was, look, I did a, yeah. I did a, I did, yeah. a, I did a right to your local yeah. MP campaign for, yeah. for Dank. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, we tried to engage with the system. Yeah, we, we MI6, we tried to engage <laughs> with the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look, my infinite horseshoe theory. That yeah, was a yeah, classic yeah. vid. CNN tries to normalize cuckolding, you know. Yeah. Labour Party Institute pricing apartheid. This is, uh, you know, all, 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 all when shit. And you from... still believe that economics was the problem. All shit from years ago. So. Oh, that's classic. That's a classic. Yeah. There we go. So. Um, can't, I'm sure he had malice on once. Well, I'm sure he was part of that series. It's just, just, I just want to double check if I'm not like misremembering. Yeah, hey! there, there we go. There was Michael Malice. I like Michael Malice. He's, uh, like, he's one of those guys who's just like he understands the kind of trolling, you know? yeah. So he, he gets the, the fun of it. Uh, okay, uh, let's carry on. Uh, Oh, um, what are your chess ratings, gentlemen? Are you any good at chess? No. Well, I mean, like, I can beat my son. I taught my son how to play chess, and I destroy him at chess, but he's eight. So, last time I played chess was against Mark. I'll, I'll get the chess, but I'll fucking own it. I won't, I'll suck, but like, I'll, I'll play you. I know how to play chess, if that's the question. I'll defeat Devin Tracy at chess. I've watched him Maybe. play chess, he sucked. <laughs> Uh, the poor, um, the poor patriarch says carrot is Clarkson is carrot pilled. Clarkson is <laughs> yes, carrot pilled. Yes, he is literally carrot pilled. At Travara one says, "Did you read Pill Sargon on race realism or avoiding?" Uh, I don't think there's much to race pill there. Uh, <laughs> say, I can't. Go for, I've lost the ability to talk. I really have. I don't think there's much I can really uh, convince him of, to be honest. Uh, but he doesn't already know. I mean, I'm impervious to your lies. Uh, All spastic. human beings are the same in yeah, evolution. Yeah, doesn't it, happen. Indeed. Uh, Spasticus Autisticus says, Jesus came to England. This is true and factual. Obviously. The Pope might be French, but Jesus was English. Did he come to England? Of course he did. These feet in ancient times walk on these fields greed or whatever it is. When did he do that? You, get the text of Jerusalem up. When did Jesus come to England? Though? Get the text of Jerusalem up. If that's not in the Bible, is it? Who gives a fuck? The Bible was written by fucking foreigners. Malcolm Mackay says, ask Athene, make AI Sargon. He does AI interviews. No, uh, V has already done this. And he's already like, look, the AI knows exactly what you're going to say. And he posted a bunch of AI conversations like, wow, that is what I would say. Bitch. James Ridge with an earth-shattering... 90 US dollars that I'm not going to see any share of. It says, Have either of you read? <laughs> <laughs> Have either of you read? 
Oh, dear, oh dear. <laughs> the eternal Persian rubs his hands. Have either of you? <laughs> How can I monetize my friend today? Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> this was your idea. I'll just have you know. It was your, your idea. idea. You said, do you want to do a stream? No, you said that. I said it ages ago, and then I kind of lost oh, I said, interest. Sure, then, I'll yeah. do a stream. I'd oh, love come for you on. To make this is just... <laughs> James <Rich. laughs> James Ridge. <laughs> James Ridge says, we're going to have to go to bed in a minute. James Ridge says, have either of you read from beds, I swear, folks. Have either of you read the Rising series? No. That is Red Rising. First book got much better with each subsequent book. What were thoughts on the books? If you like them, do you think there's any chance of a screen adaptation <laughs> and would be any good or dominated by the message? Everything is dominated by the message. Nothing is good anymore. End of story. I haven't read any of it. Deplorable Patriarch says, just as Christianity was founded by a Hebrew, mm. America was find it, founded by the English. Very Brexit 1.0. We do know that Joseph couldn't get wood. We don't know that. I think that was a joke. I know, but it's not fair to Joseph. He already got cooked by God. Machiavelli sucks to go, says, past the legal limit. I, no, mean, I, I am, yeah. Do you know, I read once that... Um, Joseph uh, and Mary did have like a secret kid called James or something, like yes. J- J- Jesus's brother. Yeah, who's been like retconned out. Yes. Did you ever come across this? Uh... Yeah, because I watched. Um, what was it Kevin Smith film? It was a Kevin Smith film. Yeah, um, it was really good as well. What was it? Oh man, Kevin Smith is one of those Generation X filmmakers, right? Mm-hmm. That's like he is. In our wheelhouse, right? Mm-hmm. And so everything he makes totally resonates with Generation X, but no one outside of Generation X really understands or appreciates Kevin Smith, right? And Dogma. Dogma, I remember Dogma. that. I had Dallin McMahon in it. Wasn't it good? Yeah. Right? Great film. If you're Generation X. If you're not Generation X, bullshit. Everyone hates it. Really peculiar. What's Tell me whole, I'm wrong, Jack. What's the whole thing about everybody saying I've committed heresy by saying Jesus had a secret brother? I assume that's heretical. But so as it, as he says in Dogma, the idea that Mary and Joseph never got it on after the birth of Jesus. Oh look, look at look at Lambda, subversive Lambda. It's not a retcon. James oh. is, James is generally acknowledged as the brother of Jesus, although not by Catholics. Subversive Anglicans. But hold on. That would mean that Mary's not a virgin. Yeah, but uh Chris Rock has a good point in Dogma. He's like, look. After the birth of Jesus, does Mary have to remain a virgin? Is she going to remain a virgin a whole life? Married to Joseph? It seems unfair to Joseph. You should know something about me, by the way. I'm not just a, I'm not just a heretic. I am a macaroni heretic. What does that mean? There's a special type of heresy called the, the macaroni heresy, which is... Uh, that Joseph was an insult his whole life. No, it's a macaroni heresy. It's something about they like Christians, right? Want to retcon yeah. all of the people in the Old Testament as Christians, ret- retrospectively. Yeah, but the Muslims do this as well, right? Jesus was a Muslim, and if you deny this, you're a macaroni heretic. And I, I <laughs> well, I guess I'm a macaroni. I, I deny this, so I'm yeah, a yeah, ma- yeah. macaroni heretic. Yeah. Abraham was not a Christian. Yeah, exactly. This is the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Ab- Abraham was not a Christian. Yeah, no, it's, it's Mac- Mac- macaroni heresy. Sorry. Why is it named after a pastor? I don't know. He was some Italian theologian. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> An Italian theologian called Macaroni. Don't even so. get me started on the Italians. Let me tell you about the cheeses. All right. I think uh, I think that's all to do, don't you? Um, uh, any last words, Carl, for, uh, for the audience before we go to bed? Italy has never produced a cheese. So uh, not one. Not one cheese. I mean, there's the Gorgonzola. That's not a cheese. That's a smell of feet. Uh, cheese tastes like cheese. It's not, what's, what's the chemical property of gorgonzola? It's not going to be cheese. I doubt it even comes from cows. It's not a, apparently it's not a retcon. It's just how prophecy works. What's that supposed to mean? How does that work? I mean... James is explicit. Radlib says... Radlib said... 
uh, James is explicitly mentioned in the scriptures as Jesus' brother. Which one? Give us a verse. Right. Yeah, the dumber younger brother. Listen, Radlib, you might have had the best fucking speech at last year's uh, shillings. Look, somebody's trying to claim that Stilton is a... Uh, what, Italian? No, Stilton is English. Yeah. Gorgonzola is a cheese, you idiot. No, it's Stilton. not. It's a foot smell. <laughs> I have to be honest, I kind of like... I kind of like... Parmesan, that's not a cheese. It's literally made of toenail shavings. Okay. I can't think of any other Italian cheeses. Exactly. Uh, Italian cheese. Literally, like... Find Furious Perthax and shame him for being Italian. Oh, yeah. Not having mm. a single cheese. Cheese. List of Italian cheeses. How is it that English cheese is so much more rich? Mozza mozzarella. That's not a cheese. That's the foam from the top of like the... the it's tasteless foam. Bra. That's not a Bit word. Bitto. That's not a word either. Barata. I mean, I don't even remember barata. No, this is bullshit. These are all copes. These are massive copes. They're not being cheddar. Can I, by the way, there's a thousand Italian cheeses. On the a thousand list. bullshit. One thousand Italian just, cheeses. Just that look like cheese. That looks like it's literally made of stone. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. They've literally carved a block of marble and like, here's our cheese. Oh, Bollocks. We're going to have to go to bed. Bye, everyone. Italia, uh, Italians. Viva Italia. Italians do make cheese, but there they go. Jesus, Jesus was a mason. <laughs> Jesus was a mason. The yeah. Italians don't make cheese, and Jesus was English. Jesus was a mason, an English mason. An English mason, that's fine. An English mason. I'm happy for who had, a, who had a half brother called James, possibly. Um, and Abraham wasn't a Christian. Definitely. Do you agree with that? Oh, well, I can know. No, no, look, the, the whole point. Jesus is, was English. The whole point about the macaroni heresy is. <laughs> If you, were, if you were Noah... Mac, is it really macaroni yeah, yeah, heresy? Yeah, yeah, macaroni heresy, right? Okay. If, if Noah, right, the God that <clears throat> Noah prayed to was the same God as God... Oh, now we're getting into complex. It was the Old Testament God. But Old Testament God. he didn't know Jesus was there, did he? So how could he be a Christian but the Old Testament, but if then, he came before Christ? Then we've got the distinct differences in character between the Old Testament God and the New Testament. Well, there's that as well. But I mean, I like the Old Testament God. A lot. Apparently Galatians 1.18 says James is the brother of Jesus. Sounds like New Testament heresy to me. Macaro but the macaroni heretics are like, you can't be Noah and be a Christian because Jesus hadn't come yet. Well, I mean, definitionally, that's correct. I mean, it makes sense to me. Chronologically, you, could, you can't cool. backwards compatibly say, "Oh, you're a Christian before Christ." No, it, it makes no it, sense. You can't. Yeah, it's, it's but, literally, but, literally, the Muslims going, "Jesus was a Muslim." So no, he wasn't. The proverb Pedro says, "Has dictator top top trumps age well?" That do you know? That's a that's a lot. A lot of people's first probably is hilarious. memories. Of we should do another one. Us was dictator yeah, top we trumps. We should do another one. In fact, I don't know if that predates that stream that we did. Probably not, actually. Probably not, but like, yeah, yeah, probably not. But dictate top 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 trumps was fun. Lander, to drive, drive, sorry, right, right, Lander's right. gonna drive here. Yes, yeah. you do, Lander. Actually, We're yes, you do. Sort this out. And Charlemagne, you have to figure my fix my website to sort this all out right now. If <laughs> listen, listen, if Moses, right, <laughs> yeah, was a Christian, <laughs> obviously not. He wouldn't be the founder of bloody Judaism. Clearly, he was a Muslim. He wasn't a Muslim. <laughs> He was too Christian. He was a bloody Hebrew. He was a Hebrew. Oh, what, what heresy is this? Jesus. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, look, there's an ecumenical council happening now. In the oh, here we go. Yeah. Fuck you. Right, I stick by my macaroni. All I right. stick by my paganism. Jesus. <laughs> you, well, you, you don't get to say Jesus if you're... If you're... <laughs> Jesus, like, do you want to join me? He's like, no, I'm too pagan. I can't help it. All right, yeah, bye yeah. everyone. I appreciate what you try to do here, but like, go on, say <laughs> it. Maybe you shouldn't be living here. <laughs> what goes on in this town is none of your business. As long as I'm living here, it is. Then maybe you shouldn't be living here. Well, that's easily fixed.